Eagle could not par it for Never hear a lion tell me down A champion will never steal down My guest is in the building Pushing you Jam Mexi Productions Publishing And legal No things, no things Canada's rocking with us Jano That's home, huh? Let me see. All right, let me let, let me open up your microphone. I'm gonna see which one of them cameras get you better. Just sit back, lean back, relax. You're good. You're calm. Oh, John, no, you're good. All right, we, we we could go either way. We could go either way. Never um, my life through. You're good. Get your life a run and thing. And can they see you? Cause my folks can see you. I hope they can. Cause I don't know. <laughs> as long as they can't see my shoes, you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? You're good to go. You're good to go. Ladies and gentlemen. Special guest in the building. Um, Prophecy, I call me right now, right in the middle of my interview. Prophecy, cool you know, say so you're glad you may I bring you on the interview. Prophecy, Wagwan. Cool, no man, cool, no man, cool, no man. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're going to have a dope conversation right about now. Um, I, I talk the industry all the time, all ins right, and outs. YouTube, yeah? yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Inside and out, and we talk the whole night, we talk the whole thing. Um, you, from my observation from a long time, cover different angles. I mean, a whole bunch of different angles of this industry. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I like catching up with the folks who do what they do, see why they do what they do. So we're going to do the backtrack story in a minute, right? Yeah. But right about now, when we say Jamexi, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of time, we, we, I always feel like people need to have their own little mantra and tagline that they throw to the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? When we say Jamexi, yeah. what people supposed to expect? Just, just, just from the word Jamexi, when they hear about you, what are they supposed to expect? All right. So my name is what it is. So Ja, mm -hmm. J-A-H, mm -hmm. is within me, M-E, mm -hmm. -E, X marks the spot in I. So me and Ja Ja are one. And XI is Roman numeral 11. Uh, there's a new Roman numeral 11, which we blaze the Vatican, by the way. But anyway, uh, I and I and Celestia. So Ja works within me. X marks the spot in I, meaning I was chosen as one of the highly ones to come here on earth and mash up the place, man, and do righteous works. Cool, yeah. cool. Cool. You know what? So, I got <laughs> a ja makes it. And you know, say my name is Jane, which is Hebrew. Uh, the root of J-A-N-A-E, which means God has replied. Right. So it's only suitable for Jane to blossom into Jamexi. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know what's funny? It's funny. I, I, over the years, I have, and, and of course, I'm sure I'm not the only one. People would assume, where did Jamexi come from, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guess what I thought the Jamexi came from? What did you think it came from? I felt like there was a merger between Jamaica and Mexico. Like you had right. Mexican heritage. And tell me, a lot of people don't think that. You know, so let me tell you a story real quick because yeah. stick up in on that. So back in the day when everybody heard Jamexi, they thought Jamaican Mexican because right. everybody called me Mexi too. <laughs> yeah, anybody in the industry, I go call me Mexi or say, you know, no Mexi. But um, I truly say, I'm not Mexican. I come from Spain. Wow. So Spanish, Italian, German, Cherokee, Indian, Irish, Dutch, I have everything and I represent all of we. And you know, say so we all lead up to black. So a uh, Ethiopian pyramid time, Egyptian, you know, and um, you say conquer the globe. Yeah. So <laughs> the most important thing though is that I come from royal blood. So if any of you wanna Google in Spain, they had the Aragon Solomonic Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And basically, we were the feds. We ran everything in Spain and Italy, but we operated on one thing, mm -hmm. God's law. Wow. And they came, Babylon came and overthrew me and the Vatican and the the New Order and this and that, and they overthrew my, my lineage mm. and our royal blood straight up by Ethiopia. Wow. So I know who I am. They mm -hmm. know who I am. And all of Uno know who I am. So I like may that. I come here to do big things. Thus... The reason my name Jamexi and right. my name is Jenny. And my dad knew me. My daddy was only 19 when he had me. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he's a bass player and a singer. Stick up in on that. But I said, Dad, how'd you get my name? And he said, You know, one day I just wrote it down and he spelled it different because mine's J E N A E. Mm -hmm. And I say, Where'd you get it from? He says, I don't know. I just wrote it and that was it. Done. Wow. So. And in a one baby picture I have up on my Instagram, mm -hmm. I stood up for the first time. And if you look behind me, there was a lion mm -hmm. behind me. So everything has symbolism. Run. Wow. And so music in my blood. My daddy is a sexy hair bond back in the 80s. <laughs> if you think of like Scorpions, Bon Jovi, Metallica, yeah. all them. 
tight wearing Levi five oh one right. skinny bass player and a lead that. singer. So um he used to play in a band called Hot Pursuit mm -hmm. and he would have been big time. But you know what he do? Mm -hmm. He stopped to take care of me. Wow. And um he raised me, not my mommy, yeah, him raised me. Wow. And he used to take me to rehearsals and while he's playing the bass and singing, he's rocking me and his little my little baby thing. Mm. So while playing his instrument. While playing and rehearsing with his whole band. You right, know, right, so right. like a rock and roll me grew up on, you know, and Ooh, a rock yeah. and roll in my soul. So the music's so, been in there from inception, from birth. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, of course, Bob Marley, Jimi Hendrix, Prince, all of them. Mm -hmm. And um I put it aside and I did the world thing. Twenty years I did the corporate Babylon nine to five, dress up in a suit, put on makeup, a cake up, a fake up, and wear <laughs> heels and all the fuckery and slave for like ten hours, twelve hours a day and Yo. and just do the Babylon thing because that's what they tell us to do. Mm -hmm. Work hard, play hard, you know? And so finally I was done giving my intellectual property to them to make them rich and I decided, you know what? Me, I go rich. Right. And me, I go to use my talent and my skills and my mind mm -hmm. to do what I have to do. I love that. So you see me here now. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Though. So, something you got to ask a question because everybody's got a story. Yeah. And oftentimes we underestimate, undervalue the story. Yep. I, I want to side off of something that is not so much music. Yeah. But you mentioned, right? Pops. <laughs> raising you, Daddy. taking care of you, right? Yeah. Which is the story that oftentimes we don't hear. You know, we hear mom celebrate. Of course, my love mom. I'm a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But very few times, even if daddies are doing it, which a lot of them are are doing it, daddies yeah. don't get the celebration. Big up to all the daddies who man up and take responsibility and raise them kids and pay a child support and go pick them up from school and try to comb their hair. Mm -hmm. Big up all the uno, you know? Mad, mad. Because my daddy did it for me. And my new my dad is a master mason. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather too. So they can build a house from the ground up. Mm. So I'm used to carrying me at the construction sites. And I had my little tool belt. And I used to take off the little covers to the the plates. You know, right, when you right. paint the light, the light side. The outlets and everything there. Yeah, and I used to run the little masking tape along the baseboard. So Ooh, no, even now I have more tools than more, than most men. And me wow. and I need a man for do nothing. Wow. I already, you know, we are talking wow. about that still. Wow, fellas, but. fellas, fellas, <laughs> fellas. She coming but hard yo, on fellas. Yo, even him tell me, him say, y'all go learn how to change your oil, y'all go learn how to change your tire because you ain't going to be stuck out at two, three in the morning and have to rely on nobody. Ain't so, that you know, I was raised I was raised around a month. So even though this is very important for Uno in our earth to understand Jamexi, even though me's a woman and me's a Rasta woman at that, right? Mm -hmm. And me's a me's a me's a priestess and a prophetess and an empress and all of them thing there because you know why? I've I've treaded through the Gideon and I've earned my right. But even though me's a female, Uno have to remember my mind is that of a man. Because my daddy trained me and my daddy raised me mm -hmm. and him raised me like a son data. So I only had my grandma, which we give thanks for, mm -hmm. Zane, and she took the woman's side. And then when we did 12, I meet my real mom and she had come in. But by then it's too late now. I already start my thing. I'm a dip on the road and, mm. you know, operate as the woman of the household because it was just me and my daddy. Right. And, you know, he's a musician, so I'm had enough woman in and out, in cool and out. I just had to daddy. play the thing, you know what I mean? I said, like, <laughs> now to play the thing so him can get the credit card and the money and all that was something, you know, because my daddy, but, and even now him still have long hair and big driver. Big Harley, you know, so him bad man, him a wicked bass player. And um, <laughs> when I go to Denver at the end of the month, could to go see my family, because all my family is still in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, may I go have my daddy lay me two tracks. Yeah. Um, may I go have him lay the bass line, and I'm going to just say, play whatever comes to your heart. Right. And then may I go build two rhythm around his bass. So he has not stopped playing. He he did stop playing, but he can still play. Right, and may I go buy him? He don't know yet, but when we get right. there, may I go buy him a Fender Jazz bass because that's what he wants. So when we take him to Guitar Center and him get him Fender Jazz bass, right. we all leave from there and go straight to the studio and I'm going to lay him a two, three bass track. Daddy don't know you plan to come and hem him he up with some even bass know, right Him not even know what go on. And, <laughs> and, and, and him poor hands, like if you guys could see from him working, they're matted up. He don't even think him can play, but I know right. him can play. Right, right. So we're going to go straight to the studio, and I'm going to tell him, look, I'm just going to turn on the recorder, and I want you to play me whatever comes to your mind from your heart. I mean, I go just record my daddy 
Yeah. And that's gonna be where I sample my biggest things from. Cool, no man. Zin, cool, so no man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we chopping it up right now with Jamex and she ain't no joke. She ain't no joke. No, Listen, sir. Let, 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 <clears throat> let me tell you this. Let me say it's a vibe, it's an energy, and, and I really dig it. We, we we hear how music comes into play because it's in your veins, right? Duh. You're from Denver, Colorado. Yes, born in For and those raised. people who know about music, Denver gets a f- its fair share of the reggae crowd coming through. Yeah, man, we have right. Red Rocks. Colorado. And we, yeah, man, Red Rocks, Boulder, all of those things. And big up to Robbie out there in Denver because them book um, enough reggae long time, Black Uru, Luchi, everybody who's been through there, man. Mm-hmm. And there's a club, Big Up Cervantes, too, because we play there and them was my partners in promotion and Mountain Lion and everybody out there, we in Jacama, Antonio, Justin, Sandra, love you, miss you. Everybody that me can think of, anybody on earth in Denver, all my family, I love you, I miss you every day with my heart. But, you know, say me dip on a mission so me can't be there. But me, I go see you soon. And hopefully my daddy not hear this because then I will say, you're not going to carry me no one blood clot studio, no. <laughs> but him, I go go because him, I go so go. So is your daddy into the reggae vibe like you are? Um, My daddy loves loves Bob Marley mm-hmm. and he loves the old school like you know you hear Pink Floyd you mm-hmm. think um you think like like Van Halen you know right, you right, think right. the legends Michael yeah. Jackson Prince mm-hmm. Jimmy Hendrix so diverse in his musical love yeah and um and he was a cover singer so like the the song that started my career is Bon Jovi shot through the heart but you're to like you're to blame mm-hmm. My dad used to sing that as a cover and him blew it off the charts and that's what made his bond famous and that's mm. how him start getting calls to like open for big shows. Right. And so when I was about one or two, he just he just didn't want me to be with anybody and leave me with the little girls him around or whatever. So him give up the thing, man. Uh-huh. I am give up in music for me, you know. Right, right, so right. me so have to continue and me have to bring him back in it before right. I'm going. You know? Right. I love that. So his name his name I forever go be because I wouldn't be without him, you know. Right. And 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 I'm me other seed, I'm me other strongest sperm, and I always tell him that, and him laugh at me. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm destined to be here, and just say for be here. So here here I am. And for those of you who know me, enough enough people in other reggae empire industry, you know, say who I am and what I come to do. And I love all of Uno. Even if I have to come after you and come in your pockets, I still love Uno. But may I go expose the truth? So. We are going to talk about that soon we enough. We're going to get in. We're going to get in. Reggae Empire, Jamaica, everybody worldwide, everybody in our reggae fraternity industry. You know what we are chat about? Jamixi. No, no, no. Let me ask you this. Pop, Pops is our bass player. Yes. Right? And, and I love the rearview mirror, right? Because I feel like, I, it, truthfully for me, it yeah. gives me an insight into why you are. who. You, and, and based on what you're telling me right now, I understand. I get it. Yeah. So dad's a musician, your own music, you know, particularly playing other genres, but yes. but familiar with reggae. <clears throat> but right about now, your soul exudes reggae music, right? <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about that reggae connection. What it is about the reggae and how did it come about with Jamexies? Like, yo, I just love this reggae, this Jamaican culture and all that. That's what I'm trying to get. Lord God. Um, <laughs> reggae come and snatch me up, you know. A, a, a reggae come kidnap me, you know. There's a reggae um, jack you. It wasn't the other way around. No, man. Um, <laughs> let me tell you, anybody who knows me, can attest to this. Reggae is my heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And reggae are my life. Reggae are my soul. Music are my life. And music is my goal. Mm-hmm. Zin. So reggae just, you know, say me love all the music. Me love country. Me love rock. Me love dub poet. Me love um, jazz. Me love R&B. Me love every kind of music because they're all art. And they come from artists, you know. And it's their story and it's their passion. So you know, um, like I say, I was a rock and roll baby, so I grew up on that type of music. And then we had the whole hip hop and R and B era, and I know every one of them rhythms and every song. My my head is like an encyclopedia when it comes to lyrics because you could just play any song on earth right now, and I go sing the lyrics. Right, right. So when I when I started listening to reggae, my dad used to incorporate reggae and when I started listening to it, it just really struck a chord in my in my heart and I say, yo, it's almost like my soul was there before or them come to me for whatever reason because even the first time I went to Jamaica, mm-hmm. never been there in my life and as soon as I touched down at the airport, I knew where I was at, I knew where to go, I knew where not to go, I knew where to go find ganja, I know where to do this and everybody will look at me and say, what? 
and mm. I've never been there in my life. Right. And I stayed up on Red Hills, Marvelly Mountain, up by Zion Gate. Right. And I was passing by Zion, and I just stopped, and I feel like this is home. Mm. So from that moment on, Jamaica, I'm my home. Wow. I'm going to leave everything here. I sell off everything, sell off my car, sell off everything. I move to Jamaica. And wow. I was there for like two years. I set up sharp, buy me a little Honda car. Everybody know my little Honda in Jamaica. <laughs> and, you know, I even even was homeless in Jamaica, you know. Even really? slept in my car in Jamaica, just like I slept in my car here too. Right, right. Enough Gideon tried me go through, but me do it, you know. Right. Me take that step of faith and say, for whatever reason, even if me crazy, call me crazy. Right. Jamaica are my home too. Right. I remember me come from Spain, so my ancestors used to be in Jamaica, Spanish town, CNT, right. all over the place, so... I must my Jamaica too. Right, right. So that's why I rep so hard for Jamaica. And anybody who know me, Jamaica are my home. If right. I had if I had a if I had millions of dollars right now, I would have never stepped foot back at US. Right, right. Only to come see my family and I would be there a yard or travel or Africa or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Because US a Babylon and we now want to be here no more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you know, so Jamaica. Um, a, l a lot of people tell me to, and, and, and me can say this too confidently and no, say no people get offended because them say, you know, say you're up for Jamaica more than Jamaicans. Right. And sometimes them tell me too, are you more Rasta than the Rasta? Because if them, if them literally see how me live my life every day on earth, how me eat vegan, I tell, mm -hmm. the, the, how me act on the streets, how me talk, how me walk, everything me do, I represent Jaja. Right, right. And how much of them Rasta Jamaica can say everything them do I represent Jaja, right. and them still a yam fish and chicken and and all these <laughs> things. No sir, you know. So a Rasta government are mobilized right now at Jamaica. You know that us big up Kalanje, right, 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 <laughs> right. Miguel Collins. You know say. Uh, one of my biggest youth and biggest charge from long time. So mm -hmm. we are going to mobilize Rasta government, you know. Right. And I'm going to just buy a one big black, big, big, big bad BMW X6, black on black. Cool, Zin. man. Jaja bless me with it because of my good works and suffering. I'm going to finally get it, you know. So right, right. May I go put bulletproof glass in it and I'm going <laughs> to ship it a yard so we are going to mobilize. Right, right. And, you know, say BMW have a one Babylon tires so you can't get them in the run flats. <laughs> So, so them boy can't come see nothing, you know, and we are go right in there, you know. We not play, you know. Uh, we came to take over the place because, you know, say a time, a time for the people to rise and Babylon right. to fall. Right. And what people not understand is all this is is smoke screens to divide us, and we need to come together because it's a pyramid scheme. Mm -hmm. So if you have a pyramid scheme and you take out the bottom, the top fall. Mm -hmm. Zin, that's why Rasta like this. That's why we do this because you see. Right, That's right, our right. order. So the first the first thing we have to do at Jamaica and Jamaicans is get rid of the Queen. Zin, we have to come out underneath of the government and Pope and Vatican and Puppet. Andrew up here, Puppet. Do you hear me on this? Yeah, Puppet. Zin and all of them too. Right. Because them not do nothing for the country and have them go bring in COVID and not give no none of the poor people them no assistance. Right. Wanna put in a three day, four day lockdown and not even give them no care package or no food. Or tell them come get, you know, a one twenty five grand or nothing. Mm -hmm. At least we get a stimulus check. What Jamaica get? Not nothing. Right, right. Them Babylon need for come out of the system, you know. It's and them amazing. know it never say, changes over the years. And them know me, you know. Me don't forget, say me's on the Department of Ministry of Industries Reggae Entertainment Partners with Popsy Grange. Right. My and I forget that. <laughs> Anytime Andrew Onus or any of them have anything in a government, uh, me am invited and me go. Right. So them know me, me know them. Right. And and it's our time. And and you know, all the Uno JDF and all the Uno constables and all the, all of you guys who are who are corruption. Let me tell you one thing. You better use your power and use it for good. Otherwise you yeah, go fall with the rest of them. All the Uno JDF and all the Uno Message. bad breed constables in Jamaica. Message. All of you corruption politician. Message. All of you J Cap Jams, Jai Po, Tad's Records, VP, Green Sleeves. Zane V Pal, all the Uno are going to get what Uno deserve. And I remember Jamex say I go be part of that, Zane. Jamex, ladies and gentlemen, dropping it like it's hot. Let, 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 me, let me ask you this now, because this, <laughs> we, this we're talking about Jamex Productions, mm -hmm. Publishing and Legal. Let's start with the production, right? Talk to me about getting into the avenue of production. Oh, Lord. So Jamex Productions started as my media. It was, it was my media slash... My music, because when I first started, let me just back up a second, mm -hmm. because everybody want to know this. 
the reason I, I really got into reggae is because I was a fan. Mm-hmm. I started as a fan, mm-hmm. plus I'm a female. Right. Plus, I love Rasta, man, them, them sexy. <laughs> Zin, and I love Jamaica, man, them. But if well, you know, yo, them used to tease, you know, so I used to live at Jacksonville, you know, and, um, yo, fire upon that, you know. <laughs> but um, I used to live at Jacksonville and mix Master Prince, Big Up, and all of Uno, them used to say, Jamexi, now go on without a turban, because them youths now so urban. And them used to tease me, and I knew yeah. Coach song sung that Big Up Chief. Though. This is in Jacksonville. Yeah, man. So, you know, say, so if you don't have dreads and you don't have a beard and you don't have sexy, dexy, and I'm my bed, I can't deal with it, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so I started as a fan, and, you know, I get backstage, and I was one of them little girl, them, and then I learned the thing. Right. So it's like you start from the ground and then you learn and you work your way up and mm-hmm. then you see if it suits you or if it not suits you. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this. Me, I go down in history as one of the only female in our reggae or in other music industry period that do everything that I do. Right. So the production piece, to get back to your question now, that's because I do media. So I've done media for... Gosh, Jamboree, Rebel Salute, um, King Shango Show, St. Mary, I come from, I did Buju Show, when I come out of prison, I do media for that. Mm-hmm. I go do media for Best of the Best, I about to fly to Jamaica, I do media for some fest. Mm-hmm. May I go to Chicago and do media for um, Mr. Martin Show, um, he puts on the Irama Awards. Right. And speaking of that, I just talked to him today and he want me to be, you know, to do come partner with him and, and put together some more reggae on the board. And mm-hmm. um, he wants me to come in on the board for the actual reggae music awards. Irama. Uh, big up Irama. Irama, you know. So, um, th- you know, those things. So I've done media for a long time and that was one of my things to get in. You know, I do pictures, I do interviews, um, partner with Hype TV, Johan, big up a lot of people in Jamaica and you know we just bring the content to the people because everybody loved the content mm-hmm. you know and so I used to go to the shows um, you know we would film their performances go backstage do interviews so I would give people access and they were just they really loved it so mm-hmm. I was like alright and then I say you know my daddy play bass I don't play no instrument but I sing and I have a good voice right. you know <laughs> my right. voice on my voice and um, everybody for years like I worked in a call center you know and I was the manager and we used to do collections and sales and everything. So I've had to use my phone voice for years. And every time I talk to anybody, we can sweet talk them, it sweet talk them into anything, you know, we could sell anything. We could sell a paper clip. We could collect your credit card if you owed me a bill. Right. I would have talked to you and we would have get anything we want, you know. So everybody tell me your voice, your voice, your voice, your voice. So I said, all right, fine. So I'm going to start messing around with Fruit Loops and Pro Tools and, um, I say, all right, I go buy me a little machine and a laptop and, you know, and, and I get a one sure mic, the old school, nice, sure mic, right, you know, right. good vocals, clean. And I um, say, all right, I go try a thing. So I'm going to put a couple of remixes together just screwing around and they went viral. Wow. Like me do what me do a collaboration. You could have pulled it up on YouTube and play it too, but um, it's where data, um, back in the day when data was burning the fire on everybody, right? right and right. then... Um, you know the song, oh, bon, yep. So I'm going to take the two and mash them together and I'm make it like I, him, and Dada was having an interview oh. and they were talking. <laughs> right, right, so right. you can go on my YouTube, YouTube at Jamexi, and you can see all these videos. But I do that and it went viral and it blew up. So I'm wow. like, cha cha. So I start use. <clears throat> sorry, see, here's my water now. <laughs> <coughs> Judge Almighty, excuse me. So I'm going to start using Ableton now. I'm going to really love Ableton. Mm-hmm. So I start teach myself how to produce. And then I get Studio 5. And if for those of you who not know Studio 5, a brand new something. It's from Studio 1, but Studio 5, Wicked. Wow. Take clean, clear vocals, and it come with Notion. So anywhere you go, you can print your sheet music, and you can give to a band to play. Wow. So... One night, we're going to talk about this because then this is the good time to bring in the surprise. Right, but, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one night while homeless in Denver in the wintertime, mind you, living in my car, I was there at Walmart parking lot at like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I had this little app on my phone, free samples, of course, because, you know, semi-illegal and publishing. But yes, they're free samples <laughs> with unlimited use, by the way. But anyway. I know how to navigate. I start um, play around with it and I take some things and I just drop it from different, different places and put it together. Mm-hmm. 
and this rhythm was born. And this, mind you, was about seven years ago. So when I went to Jamaica one time, me and Cleavy, Steely and Cleavy, me and Cleavy are reason, and I say, yo, I had a vision, and I want you to help me with my first rhythm because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I just tell him straight because remember him, I do a water bomb bomb and all these mm -hmm. things, and I Cleavy. Right. And, and I'm my bridge you know? So I'm like, all right, Jamaica, I'm just so busy. So we get to it. So about a year later, I'm going to come back again and say, all right, I got everything. You know, I think I'm ready. Right. So I'm going to say, all right, send me the file. So I'm going to send him the file and I'm going to say, what? Cleave, I'll say, what? The cleave, it's, you know, so, real deal. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to say, I have something. And I say, I knew I did. You know, I just sat on it. And so I said, all right. So I give it to Cleavy and I explain to him what I want. So him, I, him, I kick the drums. Him, I kick the drums and put him in little boom, boom, and him bounce and him things that he's trademarked for. Mm -hmm. So I say, all right, me need some horn and trumpet. So guess who I call? Maybe. They only wanted Dean Frazier. Cool, <laughs> cool no, man. Large up Dean. Yo, big Every up time. Not Dean. So anyway, so I call Dean and I say, all right, Dean, I need you to play something. So I make him hear it and I give him my idea on what the project is. So I'm play something, and he send it back. I mean, I really like it too tough, you mm -hmm. know. I the dean and me said, Jaja, what may I go do? But me, say, you know, me go from my heart and say, all right, you know, don't don't uh, uh, blow so hard and take out the one that sound like a snake and this, cause you know the flute, the mm -hmm. you know. So me, me orchestrated and him come back the second time now, perfect. Right. And then I have my guitar player, him, him named Danny from Rising Lion. I manage them too. Mm -hmm. um, he's been a touring all over America for 20 years doing reggae covers, but him a wicked, wicked lead and acoustic guitar wow. player. When you hear Danny, it reminds you of Jimi Hendrix slash Bob slash Prince. Wow. And so I let him hear the rhythm and him lick something tough on it. And so him send me back him tracks. And I say, all right, so I'm lay this track. And me orchestrate it. I say, all right, so I'm going to send it to Cleavy and say, all right, use one minute one through one minute nine, cut it, use one minute 14 through this. And I orchestrate the whole thing. And then um, I say, all right, so Magic Finger, big up Owen Renellis, Jack Hurl, BSC, I'm my BSC. Me dub him Magic Finger. Right. So I am with Cleavy, of course, because they're up at Smokey Vale Studio, big up, big up, same way. So I say, all right. Play the bass line and play it from your heart because it's for my daddy. You know, a dedication to my, my first song, of course, right. about bass. Usually drum line of the heartbeat and my tune bass of the heartbeat. So I'm lick the bass, man. Cool, no, <laughs> and then put it down. So I say, all right, we have something now. Right, right, right. So everybody send me their tracks and mind you, I record all in 432. Blaze 440, blaze the system because if any anybody know a real producer and a real musician, we are record and we're playing 432 frequency. Right, right. So all of it recorded in 432. So I'm going to get back everything, I'm mash it down, I'm going to say, all right, take out this flute, do this, ray, ray, ray. Put in this on the beginning, put in this key, blah, blah, blah. So me orchestrate everything, cle cleave it down, mix and master it, and then the reveal rhythm was born. Right. So... The reason my name at the reveal rhythm is because it are go reveal Jamexi and right. it are go reveal itself in the proper time. Mm -hmm. So mind you, this is five years ago. Mm -hmm. So me have been sitting on this rhythm <laughs> for a long time until me feel ready because me is one of them you where I don't move or do anything unless my spirit say. Right. Just like how I win won't go on stage or data, no one will go on stage or ready till them spirit say them ready or right. them ready, you know. Right. Me are the same way. So everything in a due time, in a due order. So I say, all right, may I go put this together? And when you hear it, it reminds you of like, you almost think battleship. And you think like the time has finally come. And it's almost like the curtains are come down. And it's almost like Jaja come down. Mm -hmm. And you open up the thing and say, all right, now is the time. Reveal. So it's our reveal rhythm. So that's how it was born. So, so your anyway, plan, your plan is, is going to be a juggling? So what may I go do is I'm going to voice my first ever mm -hmm. single in our earth on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm gonna kind of do kind of like this is my idea. So I'm going to come out and drop my single. And then I'm going to release it about three months later as a reveal rhythm 
collection, compilation. Gotcha. And may I go get big people that are, of course, Richie, and no further people that are my clients and my brethren and my people from long time. Mm -hmm. Because remember, say, I've been in this business 22 years. Right, right. I might not look that old, but I am. You know, <laughs> I got you. I've been doing this. I've been <laughs> so, doing this. So anyway, but I want to make them hear it because it hasn't been heard before besides little snippets here and there. And we did try to do it on a couple interview, but it was always like the interview did get messed up. And so it wasn't the proper time. But like how now when I go back to Jamaica, because I'm going to do media for some fest. So may I go back to Jamaica in July? Um, I'm going to go back to the studio and I'm going to drop my vocals because my idea is my birthday is September 5th. So I want to drop my single on my birthday. Mm. And then that way, uh, in such a time when I get everybody else on it who I want on it, mm -hmm. excuse me, get it mixed and mastered and then drop that too. Nice. But nice. the key is, because <laughs> all of Uno know I'm in legal, legal and publishing, none of Uno can do any dubs on the reveal rhythm. None of Uno can sample it. Nobody can use it unless you call me and get permission. And if I find it, I go take it down. So don't play with me because I'll let Uno know I'm serious when it comes to that. All right. So here you go. I go, go line it up. I, don't, I think it, it, it don't go no further. Oh, so. give me this. Give me this. Give me this. All right. All right, so let me see if we can line it up. I, I, I want to premiere this, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamex is going <laughs> to Maryland all go on. And again, for all those people, with, and it was crappy earlier, it's back to be normal right about now. So most of the people, if you feel like it, you can hop on over to YouTube. But I think we should be good right now. All right, again, we got a massive and crew watching on Jamaicans.com. Um, those people watching on Facebook, those people listening all over. What is it at? Um, let's see. Well, I think that's at the, at the top. At the top of that. Oh, you know what? The pure, this is a rugged phone case because I drop it all the time. I don't know if it will go work. It not have it. Hold on, this is some. Here, let oh. Under the headphone, that. Hold on, under the headphone. What is it, iPhone? No. No, nah, man, we blaze iPhone, a Babylon <laughs> phone that <laughs> I, cloud, and I. You know, see the Illuminati eye. I see them I go hack going. the cloud and all the biometrics and everything they have for Uno. So you have to get rid of iPhone and come on Android. Or that <laughs> may I tell you. <laughs> you know, I don't think... It, and it's, not, it's not a jack, this. Yeah, man. A, a jack, that? A phone jack, though. Uh, no, an yeah. audio jack. Let me see. Yeah, slide it out of the case real fast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on Maryland. Again, tell your friends to tell their friends to join us. We're chopping it up right about now with Jamexi. All right, she got a brand new production. That she's gonna share with us. We're trying to line up the thing. Cause you don't know the thing. Exclusive. Like I said, it's in the vault. All right. Nobody's seen it. Nobody's heard it. Not even the musician. Then we play upon it. All right. <laughs> Are them alone over here? Are them alone. No. Uh, go on. I don't so, see. So right about. Right about. No. We're gonna. We, we, we gonna figure it out. All right. We're gonna figure it out. But, um, chopping it up again with Jamexi, and it says Jamexi Productions, mm -hmm. publishing and legal. So right now we're talking production. Right, yes. because that's the avenue that we're 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 getting into right about now. It not fit. It not you fit. need a regular one. Are the regular one this? No, man, that's not a regular um phone. Are the regular phones? No, this? earphones. Right, this man. That it one. That right one here? too big. Look. Yeah, Ooh. but that one too big to come in here, so. Lord God, we usually don't say that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lot of mercy. That's so bad. Give, you know, have, that's you the know, only have one. Next one. That, that's the only one. All right. We are so, going to do it. No so hold man. on. No. What kind of phone is this? This one? This one is this? No. Uh, yeah, but it's a one different. Because you might have to go what? Yeah, See. that one work. That one they loose. So I might have to go use this one now. That one they loose, all right? <laughs> so, <laughs> that phone's been around Zen, black. That, may I say, <laughs> Lord God have mercy, I don't even know what to say. Jano, Jano. Hold on, all right, we are sorted out now. Again, tell your friends to tell their friends, ladies and gentlemen. We're chopping it up with Jamex. Yeah, we always try well, a nice little vibe, a nice little reason, and see what's going on. Um, all right, it's but, gonna be ready. Here. So you let me know when you're ready. Turn it up, man. It now play through that. Play through your speaker. It in? Mm hmm. You might have forgot to take off the no. case again. Oh, let me see. You might have forgot. Yes. Oops. Slide off the case. And then stick it in. All right. Let me see. 
Is that still through my phone? Yeah, it's not in fully. Hold on. Lord God, up here. <laughs> up here. You see Babylon? You see how they must fight them and they must say, no, man. You're not, you're not come with the big bad rhythm right now. Is it? You're not, go, you're not going to let them know what's going on in the earth, man. But hold on, if the two phone them are the same thing, I have the same problem. I don't know. It right, says it's like it in, in, but it don't show me the phone, Jack. We are going to try right, it the same way. Hit play again. All right. Let's see okay. We'll see if we're connected. Yeah, man. It did, yeah, man. Yeah, I hear it? Yep. All right, so we are going to start it, but we are going to explain. So remember, say the song are, are dedicated to my daddy because I appear BSC. Mm -hmm. um, hold on a second. Let me... We're getting ready can for y'all. Can you tell people where, where this is again because... They're trying to find it? Yeah, they're trying to find it. Tell them to hop on. Facebook and these things. Yeah, they can either just go to Facebook and type in at my G. Cole, or the best bet is just go, mm -hmm. go, go, go YouTube and type in Homegrown with G. Cole. Homegrown with G. Cole on YouTube. You can't miss it. Can't miss it. All right, now turn it down. Me, them say you can't have me. They don't see me on YouTube. All right. Pull, pull, you know what? Unplug it because I can hear him. And you, you know what? The world hear him. I talk no, no so. man. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> a Barrington leave you that, man. A daddy that big up Roses FM in Jamaica. Big La up joke. Barrington. Large up. Because La. what does him say? Black, y you black, link? black roses in, in my, my garden. garden. Cool, no, man. All right. The so, legend. Yeah, man. The legend himself. All right. So we're ready when you're ready. So remember, I cleave you. Cleave you and... Um, Magic Finger, Owen Renellis, BSC, Dean Frazier, Danny, Rising Lion, and Jamixi. So, our uh, uh, first time, I'm going to let this play on our earth. So, ready? Yeah. Enjoy and pay attention to the rhythm, them. Jamixi. Catch your grandma, Tanya, you know? We say the time has. What do you say? Run it. Turn it up. No, the been on my rhythm, you know. Because I drive XC rhythm, this so I have to keep talking, you know. Reveal rhythm. Baseline heavy. If you notice, you have the kicks. And here go Danny and Dean. Big bad Frasier. <laughs> Rebel in the Gideon, tough like obsidian. May I give you a little piece, but when I give you a lot, you know? Yeah. But you have to go listen because this thing I kick, man. So you see, the time has finally come. It's almost like the Lord is coming. I like it. I like it. Hear the guitar in the background. Now I hear solo, I go come up, Danny. And hear the bass line. This is my favorite part. How I feel. Again, my daddy. Big up pops. But yeah, for go see how it ends. Mm -hmm. 
Kids, so <laughs> uh, the reveal rhythm now, ladies and final gentlemen. Reveal, the final reveal, final reveal. I released September 5th, Jamex, the first single is in. So, yeah, man, a very BSF. So, you see, when mm-hmm. I say you hear it, my guitar player are coming. So, you think I want Bob Marley meets Jimi Hendrix meets style. It's funny you say that, right? Because that's yeah. what I get, I get that vintage vibe from it, that real old school rockers kind of a vibe from the it. The real reggae vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big up all the musicians. Real. Big up all the musicians. You see, we have to separate and dismantle Jamaica phone them. <laughs> <laughs> right about now, the phone them in a shambles right now because <laughs> we have to get the, the rhythm tuner by all means necessary. So this is going to be your first release production as Jamaica. As as Jamaica, the artist, yes. Right, I've right. had enough, um, enough works that I've been in behind the scenes and maybe did some background vocals and Ray Ray this and that, but... Mm-hmm. For Jamex as the artist, mm-hmm. are my first, first, first production and tune. Mm-hmm. Um, beings, I am who I am. If I'm gonna go in this realm now, I have to come out hard, man, right. because everybody I go expect it from me. Right, right. Me can't be who I am and as big as I am, even if it's in my mind. Mm-hmm. If 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 me don't know what I'm doing, so that's why I went to the greats. And I this is my idea. I orchestrated the whole thing from the finger sliding. Right. To the the drums, to the orientation, to the four thirty two, to the tempo. So when you say production, you really produced it. Yes, you ain't I ain't no am, diddy thing where you're just going there. No buy a, man, I'm yeah. here the executive producer, right. Cleavy master it, and everything on my orchestration. Mm. They were session musicians. Mm. I pay them to 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 do the thing because mm. you know, say Jamex, they open. You know, right, right, right. Everybody who know me knows I'm open. Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to pay them, I'm going to give them their publishing, but me own the master, me own everything in that first Jamexi production. So right. me, I go release my first single, mm-hmm. 100% myself. And me as a publisher, and me as a distributor. Right. And me L- let's, get in, let's get into that. Let's get into that. Talk to because because again, we said Jamexi productions. That, that, yeah. that, that's Jamexi productions right there. That's one and entity. And then we talk publishing. Let's, let's slide over to the publishing <laughs> side of things because it's something that a lot of reggae and dancehall musicians have suffered of lately of not years. having the publishing over the years of not having your publishing right right talk to me how you got into the game now of publishing and exactly do you, do you just do for you or if there's other artists out there no. that need help with publishing can you help them with that of course I can so you know what happened is is um I kind of got tied into it on purpose and by accident and when I say that I mean um I was always around in the industry. I would get invited to conferences, to different programs, to all these things. So I would join them and um, I would just learn. And so I said, you know what? I do legal anyway. Remember, 20 years I worked for Babylon System and I was a manager (laughs) in collections and bankruptcy. So I do legal anyway. You know, and I say, all right, you know, say me can do big things at this. And I started finding a lot of errors and finding this and that. And I say, you know, Maybe this is my calling. So um, when I started really getting into it, I had to stop myself for a minute and I had to pull myself away because fear kicked in because I saw the level and complexity of the people I was dealing with and who I was going to go up against, Mm -hmm. um, whose food I'm going to take from their families, from their kids. But they didn't deserve it in the first place. So it took me. I warred with myself morally for a long time. And I stayed away from it because I feared for going in. Who am I? Just Jamexi. I don't have millions. I don't have billions like these big Mm companies. But them thieves. Mm -hmm. And Jaja said, don't worry. I'll protect you. Mm -hmm. Do it. So me get a... Me get a, a back and forth and people are call me and I'd help them out there here and there, register for BMI, sound exchange, this and that, because I went to all their programs and I'm on the boards. I'm partners with DistroKid, SongTrust, BMI, PPL, PRS, anybody you can think of. Mm-hmm. And I've built and established these re- relationships for 22 years. You know, I started working on publishing probably about 18 years ago. So me say, all right. How like how I know everybody in the reggae industry and my work my way up on that side too. So everything's kind of running concurrently and, and running in the way it should. I'm going to start building my network and DJs and dubs 
And that's what I did a lot too for the production. Just to go back, I would cut a lot of dubs for everybody because everybody knew I wasn't a thief and them could send me their money. I'll get the dub, get back split and drive files, get a little video and send it back to them and then release the money. And everybody knew they could trust me. So I cut dubs. I still cut dubs. Right. Every day I cut dubs. So all of uno, if you need a dub and you not want to lose your money, you call Jamexi, you get true. <laughs> and any artist you want, veteran, and new. Right. The only thing is when I deal with bad breed artists, uno, you can go find your own money because I go support uno. But anyway, <laughs> back to the publishing now. So I'm going to say, all right, so I'm a war with myself. I'm going to give in. I'm going to surrender. I say, all right, fine. If if I'm going to be the only one with balls to do this and I'm a girl, let me do it. I'm right. a woman, so I'm going to do it. So I say, let's do it. So... The next day, I get a call from a one big, 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 big client in our Earth or Reggae. Mm -hmm. And I say, Ja, Ja, Star. Wow. Right and so that. it started. Mm. And it started. And I say, all right. And then so I'm going to start build the thing. I'm going to start get into it. I'm going to start learn the legal of it. I'm going to study their contracts. I'm going to study their composition clauses. I'm going to study their terms. I'm going to study their percentages. I'm going to learn how they plug in things in the system and how it feeds on the back end to make sure that everything matches and everybody I get paid. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn how to make seven to eight different income royalty streams out of it. Right, right. So I'm going to learn the system. Mm. I'm going to get the blueprint. I'm going to get the key from the back way. And right. when I would like to say back way, Jamaica, but you know, say, <laughs> <laughs> we go, you know, we, we learn. We learn the we learn we learn the blueprint. So in other words, we get the keys to to make everything link. Right. So that no matter what, click, stream, play, download anywhere on our earth, mm -hmm. y'all go track it and y'all go get paid. Right. So I say, all right, I'm good with this. So I'm gonna just start do it, and then we start get phone call, phone call, client, client, client. Right. And um. We say, all right, so, you know, there so it day. So, you know, I started getting into it and working, and then we start exposing all these people, and we start looking at publishing records. And, you know, this goes back 10, 15 years, back when people were didn't know what they were doing. They mm -hmm. were trying, and they put it in there, but they didn't understand what they were doing. Right. So about three years ago, the publishing systems and all of everybody came together and say. You know, we have too much corrections of records. Mm -hmm. So they changed the old system to the new system now, which is called the pie system. So you have a pie mm -hmm. and you have a composition. And everybody that did anything, whether they <laughs> breathed on it or whatever, is called a contributor. No more writer, producer, uh, author, choreographer, because everybody was getting confused when they were registering their records. They didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. So... They changed it to, if you did anything, yeah, contributor. And out of the pie, of 100% pie, how much does Uno get? So whether you get 10, he get 15, he get 15, you get 20. You break everybody up on the pie. You have a split sheet, and we're going to get back to that. But you have a split sheet, and you register it, and then it's a right publishing record. Right, right. But to go back to that you know, back in the day, everybody are bridging, are bridging, and they're just, you know, want to get the music out. And you might be, you know, smoking and holding a vibe in the studio, and you just have a bunch of artists there, and you come in and pull a real rock rhythm or one of the one drop rhythm or whatever rhythm, taxi, any one of them, and them just come and do a dub plate or them do a recording. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't think about the complexity of that, and all of them been doing it for years, like nothing are wrong. Right. And did you know, say, every artist that dropped a dub plate in our earth? Should have been recording their dub plates. <laughs> they might lose a whole heap of millions. E even though it's it's a work for hire situation <laughs> and I'm here for the dub plate up front, they should have been recording that. Yeah, because this. let me go back to the beginning because this is very, very important. And if one thing that may leave my legacy in our earth is that may I go teach Uno. Mm -hmm. And um, my services aren't cheap and I, it took me a long time. But may I go tell you guys because I'd rather you you do know than you don't know. Right. So when you first step foot in the studio and you have people, even if you have just a piece of paper, you should have split sheets on hand. So you can say, all right, uh, John, Joe, Jack, Jim are contributors. And you all agree. You each get 25 percent. All right. Each of you sign real quick. Snap your ID. Done. Quick and fast. Split sheet done. Now you're good. Now you can get to the fun port. You know, make your rhythm, record your song. Build whatever you go build. So now you master it and you're ready to put it out. Distribution and you're ready to register it. 
Well, the split sheet is what we create the legal record off of. So we go in now with everybody's IPI number, which is their publishing social security number, I call it. Mm -hmm. Anytime you register as a writer with BMI, ASCAP, PRS, any one of the world societies, you get a number. That is your social security number in essence or your TRN number in essence for music. Mm -hmm. So you register everybody, you put their percentage, and you file the record. Now that record goes out to the 138 societies in the world, and it's registered on the front end. Mm -hmm. That covers your contributor share and your publisher share. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a publisher, if you're with BMI, they collect it for you. If you're with ASCAP or one of the other ones, they don't collect it. So you guys are missing money there again, too. So you have to make sure that you know your contracts, and you have to make sure that you know what company you're with so that... Um, Hold on a second. Um, so that, you know, you're you're not losing your money because that's where a lot of the artists lose their money is like they're with ASCAP and don't realize that they need a separate publishing entity. So um, anyway, we can get into that later. But the point is you register the record and now it's ready to be put for sale. So when you put it for sale now, whoever the producer is, say they agreed to just split it 25-25 using the same example all the way. So when you put it for sale now, since they all agreed that they each have a piece in the master, mm -hmm. you put it for sale, you sell the track for 99 cents, and you divide up the money, 25, 25, 25, simple. Right. So every time that track sells, everybody gets paid. Every time it streams and it's longer than 30 seconds, you get paid. Everywhere on the earth it go, you get paid. And when you put it on YouTube and it have content ID, if another DJ come find it or want to sample it or lick over your rhythm, yeah, go get notified and yeah, go get paid. Mm -hmm. So it's a process and the process is easy, but you just have to know what you're doing and you have to have the right, you have to have the right publishing systems and you have to have the right agreements. And what happened way back in the day is you would have maybe a smart producer or, you know, the artist didn't know anything. So that what I'm finding is like the producer would have registered 100% them yep. and only list the, the person as a performer but never give them their percentage. Right. Or sometimes you find like 10, 12 years ago, none of these rhythms were even registered. I found songs that are big, huge songs that you would have think should have been registered. They're not even registered. Mm -hmm. They're registered on distribution, but they're not registered on publishing. Right. And then when you get to all these uh, distribution companies now, you know, VPAL, Greensleeves, VP Records, Tad's Records, Richie B, Old Company, all of these uh, old school distribution records, their agreements are ridiculous. I mean, I'll go say it again. Their composition clauses, 10-year deals, five-year deals. You know, you bring in Westbury, you bring in Roynet, you bring in Universal, you bring in BMG, you bring in all the big bad boy them. Mm. My fine stuff whole other time that you wouldn't even think of. And that's when I say, I did tell myself, Jamexi, you open a big can of worms. And you say, Jamexi, you go up against big people with our big money. But you know what? I'm not doing nothing <laughs> but the truth. I'm exposing the truth. I'm going back and correcting records the way they should have been in the first place. All right. And if anybody say that I'm taking food out of their pocket, like I said in the beginning, that food should have never been in your pocket. It should have been in my producer's pocket right. or my artist's pocket mm -hmm. or whoever I represent pocket. So this is where it come in crazy now because sometimes I call people in the industry because I may have something for them. Right. I found something. Or one of my DJs wants a dub or one of my DJs wants to lick over their rhythm or one of my DJs wants to sample. So they don't know whether I'm calling because I found money or whether I'm calling to take money mm. because <laughs> everybody in our reggae, they call me the black book of reggae. So... <laughs> When people see my phone, right. me a call, everybody answer. Right. And if they don't, they call me back within 10 minutes. I can guarantee you. 
Let, let, let me ask you this because we talk about <laughs> we, we talk about those entities that you have to go up against, and you you, you had to make that peace with yourself, knowing that you know what I'm mm-hmm. gonna go up against these giants. I'm gonna go up against these entities because that's what they've been doing and they've been doing for for a long time. And your con- your cause for concern came from knowing that you know they'll come back at you or whatever. Mm-hmm. Have you had retaliation? Have you had any form of situation where <laughs> them saying I make you yeah, you, Ye- like you said, yeah. you're you, you taking food out of their plate. Yeah. In this case, it's not out of their mouth, it's out of the excess because already they already got a lot. So talk to me. Have you gotten retaliation <laughs> come against you because of that? So, yes, you know, yes, I have because, you know, say so them try to kill me off already. Them try to poison me. What? Big wigs come to me. Um, I've had enough life, life-threatening life encounters. Them try to stab me one time at Jamaica. Um Enough things I've went through, you know. But my thing is, is I'm pro- I'm protected by a force and an energy that's greater than anything on this earth. Mm. And my DNA is built different, so nobody can do nothing to me until I'm my time. Mm. And when I really realized that and believed it, I had to believe it that I was like here to do a mission. Mm. And I say it don't matter if I don't have no money. It don't matter if I don't have what they have because you know why. I have the one thing that they don't have, Mm -hmm. the truth. (laughs) And how can you go up against the truth? Mm -hmm. Because the truth is irrefutable. Right, right, right. You can't change what happened. You can cover it up. You can lie. You can produce records. You can pretend to make rhythms over (coughs) people. (laughs) Uh, Ahumi attack big people. Zin, mango juice, big up <laughs> Dub Lab Productions, <laughs> Zin, Zin Kalanji, big up, you know, a big Jado. squeeze, a big up prophecy, a big up Jador, a big up Egyptian, Bascomex, Turbulence, Moja. Even though say my mother is Moja because your blood clot do a Fire King song and you're a Rasta to Far Eye, you should have do a Fire King song about a ganja to a Rasta. With a fire, fantasy, <laughs> 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 you must say, Mother Fire King with a whole bunch of girls that dance and ray ray. You know, say, I'm Beers meant to the Rasta community and you know, say, I call him and say, Yo, Mr. Owen Moncrief, what happened to you, man? What was his response? You know, say me hot right now, Jamaica, and you know, say me a big man, and, and it's going in this and that. Is it real? You, th- you, th- you, th- you think? I'm going to say I'm doing it as a publicity stunt oh. because I'm say, yo, you're a Rasta and a youth. Remember, you came off a stronger and your Rasta ways and Bobo Hill and this. I say, I say Fire King should have been a ganja tune. So trust me. So it's, but, just a, it's just a hype thing. It's just a publicity it's, thing. Yo. It's not that the rest change. It's not that the rest change, right? <laughs> nah, man, I want publicity stunt. Because if you see him just release a new tune back to Rasta now, because, you know, say me, I cuss him. And enough people are cuss him. And any time, let me tell you something. Anybody who knows Jamexi, I built my brand and I built myself and I built my, my label on principles. And I don't support bad breed music. Right. I love every artist, TJ, Alkaline, Vibes, all of them, you know, even Six Boss, the co fat boy, you would, man, I know him name, but whatever. <laughs> them I call me and say, Jamex, so you could have helped me on this and that. And yeah, me say, you know, say no, and then want to give me money. Right. And me turn down money because I don't support their music. Right. And I don't support what they stand for. You know, I say, come back to me when you have a righteous tune or you tell a message or something, and I'll help you 120%. Mm-hmm. But even like when Dada, hold on, uh-oh, Stone Lover called me, big up, Dwayne Powell live, made up on my interview, but you know, some have an answer for you, Maji, what are you going? Yeah, I'm made up on the live, you know, big bad Stone Love, big up Jamaica, the uh, power calling man. All right. Aile, all right, yeah, man. Soon link you. So you know, say when I say I'm the black book of reggae, I have no respect and my things run deep, man. So. How difficult was it to come come by that respect, though? Okay, you know, all, all people stay. You know, all people stay. We, we we hold on to that respect and it's hard to give it up. Um, how 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 was it coming by that Lord respect from God. the masses? Then? And you know, say me a woman too, and you know, them I go say, oh, she a white woman. Me not white, you know. Yes, I have white in me, but me is a brown and me is a black woman and my spirit come from uh, the Almighty right. and we come from Nibiru and space. Right. So 
them probably just say because of my color and them see me in media and these things, them just automatically, I think, may have money and them rate me, you know. But when I really start getting in the industry and they see me on the streets of Jamaica and, and going to studios and cutting dubs and up and down with the artists and them see them are carrying me and we VIP and we backstage, them right. start to look and say... Uh, who is this Jamixi? Uh, she always <laughs> did it, man. Uh, who is she, man? She always in halfway tree. I walk with her Bob Marley backpack, you know, before me buy a car. Right. Me used to take dollar taxi, bigs up our Red Hills, big up Price Right, all of them, you know, downtown. <laughs> me, did, me did do the streets. Right, right, right. So in Jamaica, if the streets don't know you, you're not go bust. And if the streets don't back you, mm -hmm. you're go have problem. Mm -hmm. And all now, me can drive it down halfway tree, sovereign, ligany, everywhere. Every time I drive a country, me beat my horn, everybody, yo, Jamexi, Rasta, go, and them I run up to clean my window. And they're right, like, right. nah, man, don't even pay me. Wow. They're like, no. You wow. know, so them rate me because they see me, I do the street. Mm -hmm. And like with this album and the reveal rhythm, it's going to come from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It was made in Jamaica, produced in Jamaica. Me, I go recorded in Jamaica and it's I go release in Jamaica. Wow. So wow. when me represent for Jamaica now, me's a real, real, real person to represent for Jamaica because me's a Jamaican too and right. me live there too. Right. And then we can't say me now a revolution and stick figure and none of these white boy reggae band I come take Grammy and this and that and mm -hmm. take it away. What was your what was your thought on that when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> me just a laugh star because listen to me. Me love them you too and me know some of them, right? right and right. me give them respect because at the end of the day they're an artist. Mm -hmm. But when you make money, and them could even say me do it too, but when you make money off of someone else's culture and style and you're not incorporating or employing or involving those people, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Mm -hmm. But if now me now, I employ those people, I involve those people, I work for those people, I'm on the streets with those people, I cook food in these people's houses, mm -hmm. we are wash our clothes, we are go a stage show, we and the Gideon together. Mm -hmm. So the difference with me is when I represent for Jamaica, mm -hmm. may I represent for Jamaica. Right, right, right. And them no say that anybody. So may I go bring back uh, the Grammy them for, for Jamaica and make it really <laughs> for Jamaica. It. <laughs> which, 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 which artists do you think right now down there can, can have that kind of strength for bringing... Because here's the thing. We talk about Soja and we talk about them not being Jamaicans. And, uh, you know, I, I, I asked somebody this question last week when they were inside, right inside of the studio, right? Yeah. Is the riot and so forth about Soja winning the Grammy really warranted? And I say it from this vantage point. People vex. Soja, five, six white boys doing what they do, win the reggae. If it was six or five <laughs> black boys from, black dudes from America, would people still be mad? You know, that's a good question. And the answer would probably, you know, Jamaicans and real reggae people, yes, mm. they would be mad be because... Mad. It's not coming from yard. It's not coming from where it, it's supposed to come from. So does that mean that the Grammy, only people who are supposed to win reg, ring reggae Grammy categories are supposed to be from yard? You know, the, the, the Grammys are run by Babylon. Mm. And the Grammys are run by the CM system. And they don't even want to make reggae a category under BMI. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to make reggae a category under anything in America. Mm -hmm. Because they don't recognize reggae in the light and manner which reggae needs to be recognized. Why is that? Because because they, they're afraid of our power. They're afraid of us. They don't want to commercialize us. They don't want to promote smoking marijuana. They don't want to re re promote our culture, period. But, but, but they want to But thief. that's in hip-hop, though. Hip-hop and R&B, they talk about it. Right, right. So and why that's, that's they? what I'm saying. But you have to see, you know, it's almost like reggae. When you hear reggae, you automatically think Jamaica mm -hmm. because of Bob, flat out. So... It's almost like the little country of Jamaica are responsible for enough thing in the world and they try to suppress it and keep it down. I want CIA headquarters there, Jamaica, <laughs> in case none of Uno ever know. <laughs> Jamaica, <laughs> Jamaica, a big thing in our earth, you know. Of course. And they just don't, they don't want to see ghetto youth succeed and they don't want to see people that are not in their circle and not in their bloodline and not in their family line succeed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people on the hip-hop rap culture side they don't have a choice because they're already birthed right in. That's their tree, you know? And, and you have to understand what I'm saying by that, but it's a higher level. 
So them almost have to put them in a one different category because them have one different level of access and rights. Mm. And them try to hold the Jamaican people, especially the righteous Jamaican people down because they know they know their rights and they have knowledge and they don't bow down to Babylon. Right, right. They're not going to conform to their rules, their regulations, their systems. They're, they're nothing that they put in. So... It's how, how important like, is winning a Grammy to, to in your in your eyes? Because because mm-hmm. this is another conversation that comes up, right? Now remember, the Grammy conversation come up every year. Yeah. And for as long as I've been alive, yeah, there's been uproar and pissed offness every time. And the, <laughs> the new word pissed offness when the time the Grammy come around, right? Because yeah, it's always whomever wins. I never them we want win. Even no. when Shabba win, I never hit on the roof, right? <laughs> so at the end Shabba. of the day, because I always feel India. like when people say when you say to somebody who you think who who you think is gonna win the Grammy. Really and truly, what they're going to tell you is who they want to win. Right. Right. Not necessarily who they think are going to win. No. Whether they, whether they recognize it or not. So the question really is this. When it comes to these Grammys, mm-hmm. right, um, how much of it, one, is a numbers thing, and two, how important is it to us? Because if it wasn't that important, we wouldn't be creating an uproar. But then when you talk to somebody, like, well, I got for them thing. You know a what peer, mean? So the Grammys are peer politics mm-hmm. and a peer industry and a peer whatever movement they have going on or whoever they're pushing to, to fulfill their goal at the time. Mm-hmm. So unless you create an uproar in the general public and the media, Mm-hmm. and the general society to push yourself and force yourself in there that everybody in the world would question you, the Grammys, why you never did mm-hmm. if you have all these millions and billions of people behind this person. So only people like that are going to make it. Mm. So when I say I'm going to win a Grammy for this song, I'm going to win a Grammy for this song because right. you know why? That's my intention. So you're speaking That's, it into being. I'm speaking it into manifestation, into existence, and mm. it's going to be because that's why I went to get Dean Frazier, Cleavy, BSC. Me get people that are that quality, and those people deserve it too, and me deserve it too because all of us have put in our work, and mm. a rhythm like that is going to restore what reggae mean and what reggae is and where it came from. And and that's our responsibility to touch on that note. Another thing I stress to everybody is we got to bring reggae back. Mm-hmm. And what exactly? That's another terminology that oh, came up. God. When I talk about reggae revolution, <laughs> revival, all kind of thing. What exactly is meant by bringing reggae back? When I say we got to restore our name, we got to restore dancehall name, we got to restore Reagan name, and I'm taking it back to Garnet Silk, mm-hmm. um, to Dennis Brown, to Peter Tosh, to Bob Marley, to you know even Prince, Mike. I mean, just even the legends they go on. Michael Jackson, you know, every one of these people, Bushman, you know, Richie, mm-hmm. Lucci. Um, back in the day, Sizzla, you know, Jamison, you know, we got to bring the foundation artist and Barrington and God, the list goes on. They might go kill me if I don't say them. <laughs> oh, just like I say, it's, it's the reggae fraternity in its entirety. It needs to be brought back to the forefront. Has to step up and work together and bring our music back to what it was. All this new bad breed um, bad message stuff that come out and shake your booty and drink this and smoke this. They might contribute to the problem. Exactly. They're not providing a solution. And all these, you know, little bad rhythms that's just tick, 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 and do, 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 you know, dumbass shit that they just sample. And they put it out with auto tune. I hate auto tune. I like a little auto tune, but not like auto tune. Right. Because I feel like if you're an artist, let me hear your voice. Let me hear your raw. Auto tune can't be I, the main artist. Auto tune can't make you an artist. It can <laughs> teach you to sing and it can teach you to level your voice. But right. auto tune are shit. Right. And everybody artists want to sound like vibes or sound like cartel or like this. So then produce same song. And don't get me wrong, we are big people and we come from Jamaica. We like party, we like dance, and that's part of our culture. But right. at the same time, enough is enough. Right. You know, and I tell all my artists who come to me for any type of mentorship, coaching, uh, management, publishing, I say, look, imagine a little boy and a little girl are in front of you and they're just looking at you like you are the God of the earth and them smiling and them wonder what you are going to do or say next. What are you going to tell them? What are you going to teach them? What are you going to say to do to that next generation? Tell them your pain. Tell them what you went through. Tell them your story. Tell them what not to do. Tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. You have to teach because if we don't teach them, we're going to lose them. 
And if you're, and that's like Tanya, Tanya Stevens say, if you're not part of the solution, mm -hmm. you're part of the problem. Absolutely. And in music, you have a one different responsibility because when you're putting your voice out to be heard by the world or whoever clicks on it at the time, mm -hmm. you indirectly affect their livelihood and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. People have saved people's lives with song. People have made people go jump off a bridge with song. Mm -hmm. People have made people stab, shoot, kill, slice, dice, everything with song. Go put spirulina in a blender with song. Sour sap, a coconut, everything in a song, so song. Sweep so in a song. Which so, is why we got to take that responsibility, which I see artists trying to shy away from. Wagwan, Bobby Dean, Kojo, <laughs> Julian, everybody that's locked down right about watching the thing, right? Princess Myra, everybody, Camille, Marilyn. It's 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 one of those. I love what you talk about because here's the thing. Yeah. Quality. A word that you dropped earlier. Quality. Mm -hmm. um, we need the quality music, but then we talk about reggae losing its 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 its, its footing at the top. Um, you also used a phrase earlier when you're talking about music. I said, "What kind of music you'd love to see?" You talk about early dada, right? Yeah. Which means dada is dada. No, I'm not early dada, right? Because <laughs> no. because remember, in a beer man, I'm I'm a huge Kalanji fan. Yeah. Up until lately. Up until about Soul Deep. Yeah. Right. Up until about Soul Deep. You mentioned even 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 Fantan Moja, right? Mm -hmm. Where where I'm gone with it with it with it with, it, with, it, with the fire us, right? So so fire at the end, king. the fire king. <laughs> so at the end of the day, let me ask you this: We talk about the youth and all them things that we are going. How much of the give up is from our 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 our, our leaders, musically speaking? Because of what we're talking about right about now, as names are the people who were there at the forefront of reggae music, as spearhead the thing. They gave up and did something else. So how, how much blame we can chop on the young artists then? You know, and they're foundation artists, you know. And even like with Dada, you know, anytime one of them put out a song that I don't think represent them in the light that it should, mm -hmm. they get a phone call from me right away and I say, I want this. And what's the and, response? And, and what were you thinking and this and that? And I say, yo, this is not good for your brand. And what do you mean shake your booty and this and and I say, you know, and them say, you know, say, me did just voice a 145 or, you know, say, I want you just came from overseas or whatever their excuse is. There always is one, right? There's always an excuse. Mm -hmm. But, you know, an artist or an artist, they're going to do what they want. They're going to make the music. If they're feeling that way at the time, then fine. But right. what they have to represent is their brand. Right. So if they're going to put out something that is contra contradictory <laughs> or the opposite of their brand or what they stand for or what their message is, then they have to take that responsibility, you know? And the new youths now, them they might come up and them see daddy and granddaddy and mommy and, and everybody I do the same thing, go a shop and buy poison food and smoke and drink and do this. And it just keep going and going like an Energizer Bunny. It keep going and going. Mm. So until somebody or one generation or a group of people stand up and say enough is enough and you teach the youths them, we're going to be in the same place. So all of them know their position. And, you know, what I, what I challenge, this is a challenge, by the way, what I challenge the entire reggae fraternity, whether you in dance hall, reggae, R&B, whatever you want to call yourself. I don't even care. Producer, dub poet, Muta Baruka, Isis, any of you DJ, everybody. I challenge the entire reggae fraternity to come together and work together and come up and restore our name and restore the industry. Is that possible? Have we ever worked together? Has the reggae fraternity ever worked together? That's why well, I, I just say, said, me challenge it because okay. I want the UK people, I want mm. the Canada people, I want anybody on earth who's involved in the reggae business from a high level. So we're trying to do something new right now, which is unity. Yeah, from mm. a high level. Mm. Whoever has a the voice, biggest, biggest, J-Cap, Jairia, yeah. Irama, mm. anybody who has, Jamaica Gleaner, Bob Segrange, the reggae, the ministry, Mm. Anybody who's a bigger entity, mm -hmm. we need to come together and we need to put a stop to things and stop support play. Even if we have to come together as, as this and just ban certain music and right. stop play it. Because if it don't come down to that, we're going to be swimming and in quicksand and mm. we're never going to win because you can't have one thing allowed on one hand and then something on the other. So, yes, some of them songs are okay for dance hall at a time or a place, but 
it's going to take us all to fix it. And we all have to own up to our responsibility and our rules and regulations with karma, with putting things in, in the earth, with affecting people's vibrations, their frequencies, everything else. They have to own up and understand what them are do. And them need to put their righteousness out and put their good out and start recording good music. Right. And teaching them from their experience. And teach that's the mission them you're from, on right now. Yeah, teach them their pain. What's your story? How, how'd you get your heart broke? How did you fix it? How did you fall? How did you get up? Mm. These are the things that we have to teach the new generation because right now where we're going, the new generation are going to be S-O-L. None of them want to yeah. work. None of them want to do nothing. They want to stay at home, make fake money on crypto and this and that, order Uber Eats, order food, call Lyft, call Uber. Nobody want to work. Nobody want to do nothing no more. Them all get lazy. Mm. Let, me, let, let me ask you this. Um, you mentioned brands, and I've had this conversation with many artists, many producers, many people in the, in the industry as far mm -hmm. as their brand, right? Mm -hmm. But we talk about the brand. And for example, some of our favorite artists, our roots and culture, our reggae artists, right? Mm -hmm. Had some amazing brands. Yeah. Um, now we see something else. Let me ask you <laughs> this. Let me ask some of them. Still waiting on the answers. How much of them was the brand not real? Was what you <laughs> saw from back then just the uniform, just whatever gonna get them out there? Because reggae was a big thing in the world and the khaki and the locks and the and the job before the name or rasp before the name was what was out there. So now They've played it. It's played its course, and them can't hold out no more. And the, what you're them seeing right now is really what they are. Them get exposed, and also sometimes you have to remember. Like, look at Jack here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mister Secretary Alcock. May I forgot to talk about you, but you know, say I love you. Um, <laughs> Jack here, pick him up. You know, say I have one different vibe about that man. But um, <laughs> look at how he started, mm -hmm. David House. You know, Bobo Hill. Mm -hmm. He was down there on Tavern, up on the hill with the little tires. You know, original David House, you know, Shango. Mm -hmm. Grew up, did everything, was around everybody. Nobody thought he was going to be nothing. And all of a sudden, him something. And him start out very humble. Him start out, you know, singing about journey and ja and this and thanks and praise. And him continue love songs, this and that. And then look what him get involved in. Right. And then, you know, ups and downs, and then him come back. But you see, if you listen to all of his music, him never change. Him only do two or three songs that I would consider bad breed songs or songs that don't represent who Jakir really is. But you also have to know that Jakir didn't write all of his material. Him not, not write him not write most of his material. Right. Somebody he has the talent to sing and put it together, and he can write, yes, but all of them hit tune, him never write them, right. and I know that for a fact, so him can't say nothing. And right. people are write him tune, you know? But when he put it to life, he have a way to do it That's in a such blessing. a sense that it'll hit people and it'll make him blow up big, you know? So he knows imagine. How to deliver. Yeah, and so imagine somebody in his position now, and him supposed to be a, a Ras and a John, him, him represent this and that, and then. Him come get in these woman cases and this and that and now I'm with Papa and all these things, you know. Um, and 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 that's not his fault either. It's almost like system I come for him because you know how he was getting really cocky. Mm -hmm. Right at the end before him go to jail Very. just now, him was getting really cocky Very. and him was out there and him didn't care and him say, I'm your cure and blah, blah, blah. But and who, who, what's, what's the real? The music or the art? Or, or the man? <laughs> the man that we see doing the foolishness or the music that we love? Like, which one of them is real? The one you see doing the foolishness. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, you know? Because, I mean, you can see it yourself. Look right. at all the lives he would post on Instagram mm. of him chilling and cooking fish and him Spanish bridge and these and things. You can't see who people are, especially nowadays. You can't see on Instagram and you can't see... <laughs> Jaja, there goes my phone again. <laughs> but you can see who people are and what they're about and what they do, you know? Right, right. So the whole thing is this, is that karma will catch you. And if you're setting the wrong example and you're using your position in, a, in such a manner that you're not supposed to do it, I'll go come get you. Mm. You know, and the whole thing with Papa now, I want bug of foolishness that. And I can say that <laughs> firsthand because, you know, right. say... I've been in the industry a long time, and it's a shame that him have to do more of his life in prison and record his next album from prison again. Right. But at the same time, he needs to slow down the bridging. He needs to come back and think and go back and humble and go back and remember when he made all them tunes and, 
and when him go through certain situations because when you get that high in the earth mm -hmm. if you don't stay humble and you don't stay to your destined path you're gonna fall off mm -hmm. and you're gonna get knocked down to nothing and everything you have are gonna be taken away from you right right so, so so what's going on right now yeah for lack of a better word was inevitable of course Right. Of course, and that's with everybody too, you know, and um, I know we kind of steered off gear a little bit, but like the publishing thing, just to go back to that, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I say, like, people don't know if I'm calling them for a good reason or a bad reason now, because I've gotten so deep into it, and I've worked with so many big clients, you know, big clients, you know, um, I don't just work with little artists, I, I don't even take every artist that call me because I can't, I'm too busy. And I devote my time to my veteran artists, the ones that mm -hmm. I care about and I cook with them and I know their family, I know their kids and I'm trying to protect their empire and I'm trying to keep the ones and ones that need to be protected in this industry protected. Mm -hmm. And those are my main priority along right. with myself and my music. But um, I try to help as many people as I can. You know, I do free consultations. You can go to jamexy.com book an appointment, you know, all of my social media is at Jamexi. Um, But what makes me good at publishing is because I know legal and I know contracts and I know how to read these things. I know how to find the loopholes. I know how to breach them mm -hmm. and I can sue people. And that's from so, years of experience working in that field. Yes. And so with the publishing records now, I just do the simple thing. I go back through your catalog, go through your portfolio, fix everything, do the split sheets, re-register it, redistribute it. If your contracts are up, I send a cease and desist to take them down. We track your money. We find your money. We go back as far as we can. Sometimes it's only three years. Sometimes it's to inception, depending on the contract and what happened. But we look at everybody's situation as an individual, um, and we fix their publishing, and we do it right. You know, it's registered in the world, so you're protected no matter what. Um, and then on the hub of that is the distribu distribution piece, because once I register it, once I have the split sheets, the contracts, ray, 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 then we put it out now to go for sale. Right. And we have control of where it goes, the reporting, the accountability, everything is transparent. Whoever's supposed to get paid off the master is going to get paid off the master. We are going to sound exchange. We are going to claim it. We are going to give it to who we need to claim it to. And that's where the artists mess up too is they think, oh, just because they have BMI or JCAP or PRS or ASCAP, they're good. No, sir. <laughs> you know, that's only two that's only two pieces of your publishing right. you still have master rights mechanical mechanical rights you have your distribution you have master you have your writer side you have your artist side you have your publisher side now they came up with mlc which is the mechanical licensing you have all of your clicks your streams your downloads your purchases your youtubes your tiktoks your facebook you have Audio Mac, you have SoundCloud, you have Spotify, you have every blood clot thing in our earth. And there's so many systems that if you're not signed up together and they're not linked together, you're going to miss your income. Like I said in the beginning of this, you can have up to eight streams of income just on royalties. And I know how to do that and set it up right so that I get paid, of course, and you get but paid. But that's how the business go. You know what I mean? Everybody <laughs> got to get paid. And you, you know that what I, I must ask it. you, too? Yeah. How many, because this is where it's at right now. That's where the business is at. And that's yeah. what the artists got to know. Artists are familiar, right? Mm -hmm. If you speak to most artists, they're familiar with some of those income streams, right? Right. What they're unfamiliar with is how to tap into those income streams and how to get it. Now, when it comes to, you know... And how to link it right and, and how, what they need to register with yep. and how they register the file. See, they can... Re see, and that's where everybody messes up. But how up. many entities are in Jamaica that can provide that service for those people? I Probably none or maybe two or three, maybe. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, is remember, JCAP's there, Jam's there. Um, Jaipo's there, but JCAP are one of the biggest thief in our earth. <laughs> Lydia Rose, all of you, JCAP, McKinsey, all of Uno, everybody, all your attorneys, JCAP, you are biggest thief in our earth. So, so JCAP, that's supposed to be the system and the source that the, the artists are relying on. You're saying right about now, <laughs> it ain't that. No, and they don't do nothing to help the artists. And you remember Dean McKellar? Dean McKellar was only the one of the ones that was out there on the street mm -hmm. and working the ground and um, trying to help the artists get their things registered and all these things. And them come kill him off. So mm -hmm. 
You have to know CJ Cap take 30%. If you read their contract, them take 30% right off the top. Mm-hmm. And plus more for their administration fee. Wow. Let me ask you this, because you, ha- you have a lot of experience on, on the <laughs> other side of the fence now, which is the, 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 the media part and the journalism, and you're at these events, you're going to be at Best of the Best. Yeah. You're going to have some, some, some fest, fest. The, 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 um, in, in July, mm-hmm. and you've covered a lot of other events. How lacking are we? Because I had this conversation with somebody the other day, mm-hmm. again, right here, when it's Olympic time. Yeah, we find the money. I must have we didn't yeah. find the money for send media and journalists <laughs> with the, with the, with the athletes, right? Yep. When it comes to Miss Universe, I miss this, I miss that. We could find that, whatever the case may be. How mm-hmm. important is it that we do better when it comes to media representation for the reggae music? Because it seems like it's very very lacking, and we don't have any great imagery, any great representation, any great reviews to go out or to come in from this reggae or dancehall music. What's going on in that side? You know. Um so with all the media houses in Jamaica, you know, usually media people who attend, you know, we don't get paid. We we do it on our own. Um, we support our companies. We big up our companies. You know, most of the big stage shows, they pay their main camera people mm-hmm. or their main media people. But most of the radio stations and these and that, sometimes you have to pay them to come. You know, and we don't get paid, but we do it to try to spread the content and try to keep reggae out there. Um, so it would be nice if, like, even Bob C or the Department of Ministry could put in an entity for, for media, mm-hmm. you know, that's specifically focused on covering media events or going to Mona or going to the production program or going to all the, you know, r- sorry, Rastafest um the JMC events, you know, and just mm-hmm. having dedicated staff and dedicated crew to be putting Jamaica content out to the world, mm-hmm. um, because a lot goes a, a lot goes on behind the scenes in our country, and when I say our country, I may mean, I talk about Jamaica, mm-hmm. um, that people don't even know, you know, and um, there's enough talented people in Jamaica. There's enough talented people in our industry. And some of them have got pulled in different directions. Some of them are affiliated with people who they shouldn't be affiliated with. And it's going to be a shakeup. I think it's going to take a shakeup of the entire industry to see who's built for this industry and who's meant to be there. And once that shakeup done and you sift through all the righteous people and all the dumb people and the, uh, the thieves, and I say dumb because they have to be dumb to think that they can steal food from someone else and never get caught and the truth never come out. So in reality, you're a dummy. <laughs> but anyway, you understand. So may I have to say that because it that's is truth. It is. it is what it is. And that's one thing about me. Me and I sugarcoat nothing in our earth. May I go tell you? Right, right. May I go tell you the truth. If you not right. look good, may I go tell you, hey, you not look good. If me not look good, I'm going to say, John know, John makes you not look good today. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, you know, may I, may I just go say the truth because that's just me. Makes you know, trip. <laughs> and and that's the thing too. People either love me or they hate me right. because they either get me or they don't. No neutral, no in between. There's no in between, and there's no <laughs> on the fence because, like, I'm one of those people that, like, I know my shit, right. and I've went through the Gideon. I've proved myself. I've worked hard to get to where I'm at as a woman in the reggae business and a respected woman in the reggae business. That anybody right now, three o'clock in the morning, them can call me. You know, say, Jamex, I'm just logging on my tune core and what is this? Or, or can you check my bank account this? Or can you check this? Or, hey, I'm just drop a new tune. Can you do me a split sheet? My work not stop. Right, right, right. And me, I get to the point where I'm in a business. Anybody can call me anytime because my work nighttime anyway. Right. <laughs> Let me put that too. When I'm there in Miami, I work for corporate Lyft and corporate Uber. Right. I'm one of the top 2% of all Uber black premier drivers in Miami. Wow. You know how many drivers are in Miami? A lot. Okay. A lot. <laughs> when they sent me those stats, I had to look at it and say, wow. So when I say I work for corporate Uber and corporate Lyft, me a driver. So me run taxi. From 10 o'clock at night till 4 in the morning. And I have I run my Lyft Lux and, and Uber Black and, and Lyft Black because I have the BMW. Right. So, my love pull up to people that don't even ex- expect to ride in such a car and them get surprised and I make them happy. Mm-hmm. I even take regular Lyft rides and just surprise people when I show up and they're like, what? And I say, nice. how are you doing today? You know, and they're like, wow, thank you. You know, and they're, you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm and i a woman who work at nighttime. So you wouldn't imagine how many women I pick up at nighttime. And they're like, thank God you're a woman. Mm. They're like, 
this is the first time I've felt safe in an Uber. Wow. You know, so <laughs> so I do my things for a purpose. Mm. And I think Jaja also put me in that too because I'm in Miami. You know how much links I make, VPs, celebrities. I've driven enough artists. I've driven enough DJ. Mm -hmm. Big people from Emirates. Um, the Emirates Arabs come in. Me get all the Babylon people. Me get Department of Defense. Me get all these people. And me right. make my network. Right. And them love my vibe and them love my energy and I provide good service. Right. You know how hard it is to be a five-star driver in Miami? No. Okay, so not even to say that, but me, I run taxi, brethren. No, I get you. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. Me, I deliver food. Me do right. Instacart. Me do Amazon Flex. Me have Corner Shop. Me have Go Puff. Me have every one of them because when I'm here, me dep on the hustle to make my money. So why? Mm -hmm. I can go back to Jamaica. And do my music and be over there and live my life and focus on reggae. Right. So for eight years, I've been doing that, living half of my life in here, Miami, and the other half in Jamaica. Right. So until me can get myself to a point where I can sustain and build my property over there and start my food and my ganja and grow everything I want, I have to just go back and forth. The, the, the artists who we, we, we would see <laughs> as the people who are bringing in the literal cash literal money from it right yeah we see the struggles of the artists and the musicians right now the people on the business end of it not the rippers and the rapers and the gripers right mm -hmm. the people you said what, what you're doing the business side of it how sustainable is that it's very For reggae music it's very sustainable because what even the artists that you see that have big money mm. them would have really have big money right. if them really know i right 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 and i found cases that i want to go get sick because millions of dollars are mm. just gone wow because they have this thing in publishing where it's the three-year rule so on the front end if your records were never registered or you weren't listed there as a, a contributor they put that portion in unclaimed funds, mm -hmm. and you have two to three years max to go back and file a record and say, I want to go back and try to collect the difference. And they put the file in what's called an overlap. So they go into the bank, and then they offset the, the balance to pay the person and correct it. After that three years, that money goes into what's called the funnel system. That's how your Drakes, your Rihannas, your big people stay getting paid because they take all those unclaimed funds at the end of every quarter when they go to distribute and they pay the top artists on down. Mm. So they get money that they don't even work for because it's unclaimed funds. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a contract in which they breach their contract or they say that it's only for five years and then after the fifth year you're entitled to your full master, well, then you can go back and sue on that because it's a legal document and you can only go back to the statute of limitations. So when you put two and two together and how nobody used to do split sheets and no documents and it was just Bridgerton here and we in the studio and we make a tune and Ray Ray like Bob's kiss, mm -hmm. the million dollar lawsuit. You know, everybody think they are Bridgerton, but when that song bust, everybody going to come out the woodworks. You know, say me play keys on that. Yep. You know, say me play bass on that. You know, say me mix that. So if you not have your paperwork straight, you go in on a lawsuit. Yeah. And this is why I stress the split sheets and contracts and paperwork are the most crucial thing to music. Because even if you're just there having a vibe, you and I say this to be a smart ass because that's how I am. Even if you write it on a piece of toilet paper and everybody there signs it, that's a legal document and I could use that. Me could go to court right now and use that piece right. of toilet paper. Right. People don't understand. Contract's so, a contract. Split sheets, contracts, agreements, percentages, who owns the master, who doesn't own the master, who gets what, and sign it. And if that song bust, it bust. If it flop, it flop. But at least you have something to stand your ground on. Mm. And that way nobody in our earth can come back to you and say nothing later. Right. Because I'm going to pull up all my DocuSign and my split sheets with your signature and your ID and say, what case y'all talk about? <laughs> Do it right. Okay. Do it right, baby. Yeah. Jamex is going to do the thing right. That's the thing. Right? <laughs> Before we get up out of here, Jamex, because there are reasons that I didn't realize that two hours run off already, but you don't yeah, know. Yeah, man, this that's is just all right. Vibe. It, it, it needs to be done. It's just vibe. Let me ask you this, right? Because And I'm asking you this based on a comment I see here, which I totally disagree with, but that's just me. Yeah. All right. Um, Reggae. Yeah. Grammy. Yeah. Let's circle back to this real fast. Yeah. 
Should the Reggae Grammy only be awarded to people from Jamaica? No. Okay. I say it should be awarded to somebody that understands reggae music, mm -hmm. has studied the foundation, mm -hmm. has created their own original work, mm -hmm. and has, has earned it and deserved it. You so, can be from Spain. You mm -hmm. can be from Peru. You can be from America. You can be from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad. My point is... True reggae. Stay true to the thing. Stay true to the reggae Under and the be foundation. If you support the foundation mm -hmm. and you live and breathe that every day and that comes out in your music and you deserve to win that Grammy, mm -hmm. then you deserve to win that Grammy. That being said, what disqualifies Soja? Why is it that people are... Wh wh why the uproar? You because, know, because based on what you're saying right there, <laughs> they've done all that. They, I don't see where they haven't paid homage. I've seen the band do their thing for the past 20 years. You know, they have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the point is, is that they, they've be, been so commercialized. Mm -hmm. And they're being controlled by the powers that be because they got involved with people they shouldn't have got involved with. Mm -hmm. And because I said the, Ramey, the, the Grammys, the Ramys, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> blaze fire panuno, <laughs> we are going to take it over. But anyway, because of the Grammys mm -hmm. and the politics of it, like I said before, and it's not what you do or how you do it, it's who you know. Mm. You could have a shit for song and win best song of the year if them want you to. Right. If them want you to. Right, 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 right. So Soja and them, they know what they did. Right. They know what they gave up and they know what they signed. Right. And they know what agreements they made. So it's not that they don't deserve it. Right. It's not that they don't have the good music, mm -hmm. but they don't represent it as a foundation and they don't represent it in their daily lives and they don't live it and breathe it. Right. So I think that's why so many foundation artists and mm -hmm. real people that feel like this is my music, this is where it came from. But you have to remember, we all are human beings and we come from the universe and music is a universal language mm. and it operate on frequencies and boundaries. So it's almost like who have it, have it and who don't, don't. But if you're going to use something, use it for their benefit, not for yours. I, I love that. And that being said, right, because, again, I feel like a lot of things are unjust in terms of the statements that people make. And again, like I said, I'm looking at a comment right now that's saying pretty much that the Jamaicans for winning the Grammy. But here's the thing, which I 100% disagree with. But here's the other, here's the Jamaican, other part. Jamaicans, no, you know what? Jamaicans should have their own category for the Grammy because I think it should be like a Bob Marley category or maybe like a, 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 a like a, a maybe a country or something. I think Jamaica should have its own category for the Grammy, and it should Jamaica. Cover a yeah, country? So, so, no, so how would like, it not necessarily, like, it should be its own, it should be its own section. And what I mean by that is it should include whatever dance hall, whatever reggae, mm. whatever dubstep, whatever poetry, because you have, like, Muta and a couple other people. So any music that come out of Jamaica, mm -hmm. it could even be R&B or hip-hop. It don't matter. Right. If it's made in Jamaica, bred in Jamaica, and come from Jamaica, mm. I think they should have a separate category. And it, and, and it should be just for Jamaica because they're so, the so, foundation. So wouldn't, so wouldn't we then now have to have a category for Canada and a category for the UK and a category for this? And Not a, really. It, for, because, for, from other genres. No, because you can have world reggae category and then you can have a No, I'm not talking reggae, no. And I'm just talking about if we open that Pandora's oh, box. Oh, for, for the country. Yeah, if, no. we, if we're doing that, then isn't the whole thing now going to be one whole it would international be, debacle? <laughs> it would be a can of worms. But here's my thing. You could have, you know, and this is just hearsay, but you could have like, you know, one category for reggae world reggae mm. and then you could have one category for um you know like i said make it like a bob award or like a foundation award where it's something that's bred out of jamaica because jamaica is the birthplace of reggae nobody in our earth can argue right that jamaica is not the birthplace but of reggae. The, at, at this current moment 2022 What's the quality of music that's coming out of the birthplace? Because at the end of the day, Shit. It, if, if, if we're being honest, <laughs> some of the best quality reggae not coming out of Jamaica right about now. Listen to me. The stuff that's coming out of Jamaica right now appear garbage. And okay. that's why, and I, and I don't care. Everybody, no say ala uno, no say appear garbage and come out of Jamaica <laughs> right now. And that's why I must say, 
I challenge the entire reggae fraternity and everybody that has any power or any say to restore this because we got to put foundation reggae back and we've got to bring good tunes back and we've got to get these new dancehall artists to understand what dancehall really is and get back to the old vibes. You know how they say everything's a circle mm -hmm. and you know the styles in the 60s and the 70s may fade away, but then they come back again. And we really got to take a step back and go to where it started and we've got to restore it we've got to build it we've got to come together we've got to bring new school we've got to flip it twist it do whatever we got to do but we've got to have better music coming out of jamaica right now now because because here's the thing too and again latching on to the, 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 just a thought and a comment the, the, the premise of okay we nationalize so to speak right or internationalize what's going on yes the reality of it is this <laughs> over the last 10 years 15 years mm -hmm. How much of the, we couldn't we couldn't have any Grammy winners from Jamaica because majority of the people hope they don't live in Jamaica anyway. No, yeah, I mean majority of the artists <laughs> that, that, that that's opening them categories and the names and doing whatever the case may be. They're yeah, not living in can. Jamaica. They're trying to present that they do, but they don't, right? No. So that means that based on social security number and driver's license, they would be disqualified too. Ex well, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But see, this is the thing: is everybody want to hurry up and leave yard and look at me? I want to hurry up and leave here and go to yard. I love it. And how much people, you know, like me would give up everything and do everything to go to Jamaica when everybody's trying to get out of Jamaica to come here. Right, right. They don't value their country. They don't mm. realize the resources. They don't realize the freedom of life. Um, you know, just the way we operate life over there is completely different from here. When I fly from here one day and fly from there, I start in a one vibe in the morning and I'm in a different dimension by the evening. Yeah. And it's one way of life when you're here and it's a next way of life when you're there and it's no happy medium. Mm. It's either you do it or you don't, you know? Right. Um, if you sit down one day at US, you feel like something wrong or you should be doing something or bills are run or this, but it's not nothing to stay home one day in Jamaica and sweep up and clean and cook some food and... Right sun your clothes and walk out the river and just you know it's not over there but if we did that here we would look like feel like we was crazy crazy you, you know, know you know fell off <laughs> yeah so you know it's just a one different thing and the bottom line is this any talented musician mm -hmm. that puts out a good song and a good composition should be entitled to win a Grammy, no matter what category they're in. But unfortunately, the people who run the Grammys mm -hmm. are never going to do it that way unless we take over. Yeah, but how, how, let me ask you this then. Speaking of, speaking of that, how much of the past winners are not deserving of it? Because, I, again, I, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's, all, it's all subjective, right? Because it's because all Because subjective. truth is, the Grammy's going off of Sonics, right? Yeah. Um, the Grammy's going off of also... You can't hide this. This anything you vote on is popularity. So if people are voting on stuff to get to the final nominees, it's mm -hmm. the names and the recordings that they know because nobody's listening to two hundred albums. Exactly. Right. So so that part of it you can't help. So no. when it, when it gets down to now the final part of it, I mean it is politics, but what is not? You know what I mean? If you're voting for prom king and prom queen, it's politics, right? Yeah. So so you can't get rid of it. But let me ask you this. Because I've always felt over yeah. the years that reggae don't give room for two star. No. Is, is it just me? Or is it when it comes to reggae and dancehall music, it's always just one star. It's not like hip-hop where you got 10, 15, 20 big stars, right, right? right? It's just room for one star. Why? You know, because, well, because you know how Jamaica day. You know how we stay. <laughs> you want to be on top or you're not on top, you know, and you want to beat out everybody else. And you want to say, yeah, the one dancehall king or the queen. But I feel like you should have two top because dancehall and reggae, you have two. You have two. Because dance all are one different genre and reggae are one different genre. Mm -hmm. So even with that said, you should have two winners and you should have two categories. And then even if you throw in the Foundation Jamaica Bob Award or maybe the Tribute Award like Irama mm -hmm. does, how they give certain awards based on certain criteria. Mm -hmm. So once the Grammys establish different criteria and they stop based so much on politics and base it on pure raw talent mm -hmm. and not who you know or what you signed or what you agreed to, then we'll get somewhere. The people like to answer your question, the people that have won, they mm -hmm. may have may, may or may have not deserved it. Right. But 
They want it at the time for a purpose. And then you got to look at what their purpose was for winning and what happened after. So the truth is there right in front of you. You just got to go look for it. And at the end of the day, again, any of these big companies, BMG, Universal, Warner Brothers, you know, the Grammys, the Oscars, anything you have is controlled by the powers that be. Right. And the Eat family them. So until all those Your neighborhood leaders, in Jamaica is the same thing too. The unfortunate. It's like everything's controlled by somebody. Everybody a puppet and everything controlled. So that's the thing. Until we start as a people, start changing things and coming together and uniting and... Standing up for our rights, like Bob say, you got to fight for your rights. Many right. more are go dead, many more are go suffer, but we have to do it because the pyramid scheme is set up to fall and the people that are at the top are going to fall because if the people underneath come together, mm -hmm. there's billions of people in the world. We could start our own empire. We can put in our own government. We can be self-sustained. We don't need them to do nothing. They're just dangling carrots. Right. And don't even let me get me started on Biden and them bumbo clap boys. <laughs> Zin, because them are on pure extortion. Listen, we're, not even part, we're not even part of the war and them raise up the gas prices on we like we say. We, Florida and I have our own pipes right out there so and we have enough gas. And the you know. people are stupid and they let them do it because they say, oh, we're at war. So the gas goes up. No, sir. Them are on extortion. It's a lot of things that we... we, we, we and it, It's from the beginning of time. I'm one of the people who... I, I guess I'm in the minority when I say I don't think dancehall should have its own category. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. And, and here, here's the, really? Here, yeah, here, here, really? Here, here's the major reason why I can't say that, right? Let's just be factual. Let's yeah, be actual, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's be actual, no, not factual, right? This is interesting. I like So this is 2022. We just right. had the Grammys the other day, right? Right. Let's say the Grammys had their own categories. Yeah. You, uh, it was, it's five albums that was nominated, right? Right. All right. Tell me five dancehall albums that would have been nominated. For, if dancehall had its own category, tell, there, me, five, tell there, me five albums. There wouldn't be five. So we not have that. So how them have category? Well... That's the thing, though. It don't even have to be five or nothing because, all right, when I say dancehall, all right, let me, let me, let me take a step back. Mm -hmm. When you say dancehall, you think old school, bounty killer, beanie man, you yeah. know, um, silver, cat, sh sil silver cat, shabba rings, mm -hmm. um, you know, 85 rhythm, you know, busy signal, you know. Vintage bujo. Vintage, you know, bujo, of course. But then when you say reggae now, you have Garnet Silk, you have Bob Marley, you have Luciano, you have Coco T, you have Barrington, you have Richie, mm -hmm. you have um, Daddy Beerus, you have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's all reggae, but it's two styles. So you have the dance hall, which is geared towards dancing, making mm -hmm. people shake their booty and go out and have a good time and mm -hmm. hold the vibe and create the sweep and mm -hmm. create the hockey dance and the soap soap and whatever you want to call it, right? Right, right. So then you have the righteous tunes where you want to hold a one, two, two and hold a skink and vibe and hold your spliff and just uh, vibes and rockers. Mm -hmm. You know what me I say? So to me... It's always two category no, because from, you can't different. lump it. True. But and I feel like these type of musicians mm -hmm. deserve to be credited for what they do. And these ones need to be credited because I don't think it's fair to put one of them up against each other. No, I, I, from that vantage point, I hear what you're saying. But, mm -hmm. what, but what, what I'm getting at is this. The volume is not enough to constitute its own it's thing. It's not. And the truth is. But it should be. Truth be well, that's not on the Grammys. That's on the people who, who make the music. That's what I'm saying. You we have I'm saying? A, This is my point to Al Uno. We have enough talent and mm -hmm. enough people in Jamaica and enough artists that need to come back and revamp themselves and revamp their career and come back to the studio. Mm -hmm. We need to need come. to leave the studio. And some of you need to leave the studio and pretend like you, you could start pretending like you know what you are doing. You not know how to do nothing in the earth. And you sound like pure auto tune and sound like shit. No, man. Me, I'll be the first one to tell you you shouldn't be up on the mic. You zin. But anyway, some of Uno need to come out of the studio. And some of Uno who think you're a bad breed, you need to talk about your story. Because right. I know underneath all that talk, y'all won mama's boy. Right. And you went through pain and you got hurt and you went through your story. So instead of using that. that's more that, relatable. Stop using yeah. that to create 
ruckus and create violence use that to teach the youths and maybe they're going through the same thing you went through so sing about your struggle and use your talent and turn it in a one different way right. because this is what we need to make the righteous um or i'm sorry to make the music more relatable we restore it we revive it we rebrand it we remake it and we make it with a message Right. Because if we don't teach the youths, then we're not doing our job. And I go back to what Tanya Stevens said, too, because if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Yeah, man, a big squeeze. I call me on the interview. Why go on, Bridgen? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Why go on, squeeze? Jano. Yeah, man, I'm still dip on here. You're live dip on here right now, but I threw you live call, and direct so together, ladies and gentlemen. Live. Yeah, man, what question? Tell them for you five minutes. You done it. We're done in five minutes. Five. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, you too. May I go shot you the link? All right. Yeah, on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. Just oh, the same home, same link I'm sending. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to thank Jamexi for vibing out with us. Jamexi, may I ask you this? You see? Yeah. May I give you two questions before, right? That's what I'm yeah. taking five minutes. We will over time, but guess what? Well worth it. That's all right. Um, <laughs> we have two questions for you, right? Yeah. We've seen real stars emerge in our reggae and dance all over the years, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And we always see them from inception, from their youth coming up. And, you know, if... if, if for me personally, I can always identify from jumps. You know, something the artist there, right? Yeah. And by when I say coming up, it doesn't mean they're not an album deep already or five years in the game already or whatever the case may be. They're just right. not reached a pinnacle yet. Yeah. Who's got next in your eyes, your ears, your your heart? Who's that artist that is poised for superstardom? I'm Mr. Superstardom. When we come to Jamaica and Jamaican artists, we have a misconception that because you can you you, you can finagle some views by YouTube. Yeah, star. And you have the YouTube views, then I have the streams, then I go on, and nobody's ever seen you in the world on a stage before. So we're talking about real things. Sean Paul was a star. Is a star. Shaggy a star. Junior Gang a star. Busy a star. Buju a star. That's the Vegas a star. Vegas a star. Um, what name? Egyptian a star, right? And we, we, no, no, no. Benito. No, and we're talking about what a star is, you know. Whether you love the music or not, the man of a star. Who are the next one? Who's next? Jamexi. <laughs> Bumbo Clown. Wait a second, Jamexi got next? <laughs> Jamexi yeah. got next. I got next, but no, a true semi got next because right. when me bust my turn, then yeah. me can lay one and them can take it back because wow. that's all me I go need. Wow. So Janex is up next. I'm me up next, man. I love Zen, that. I'm me up next. I dig it. Because I'm going to do it. Because I've been working hard and I deserve it. And I'm good at what I do. You know, I hear my voice. Right, right, Imagine right. when we can sing or when we can cool, come and man. put a chant and Ray Ray. And so, I hear it. Cool, no? All right. So it's so, September before we get the tune? September 5th on my birthday. Mad. So, Mad. but anyway, but to speak of, um, all right, so Prophecy. Mm. Everybody know Prophecy and the band. Him, him play, him cover enough people and him backup band. Prophecy, regular mm -hmm. life band. Prophecy, a one good diamond in the wrath that hasn't been exposed fully yet. And mm. so him I go come out with some tough, big, bad stuff. And let me say this, on the bad breed side, I have one youth named Papi Kilo. <laughs> <laughs> Papi Kilo, them call him the Spanish it. bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Him have a one style that remind you of, you know, and I hate it. And him know say me hate it. But, you know, vibes and, and vibes, you know, vibes and alkaline and these things, you yeah. know. When you hear him, Same you think vein. six and you think this and that, you know. and But the youth have a style mm. and him have a voice and him have knowledge and him have the ability musically to really blossom and do big things in a dance hall side. Mm -hmm. um, he just need the proper coaching and developing. And I want to, my artist, me manage. Right. And me just take over prophecy thing too. So may I go run prophecy too. Okay. So them too, and not just because they're under me, but I don't, you have to remember, my name Jamexi, and I built my brand over 22 years. So I'm not going to associate nobody with my brand or my name who I don't feel 
is up to par or on them levels. Just like my producer will call me Big Squeeze and Dub Lab and um, Super Sept and me work with mud people and other business, you know, and Bulby. You know, Bulby a bad producer, but him so quiet behind the scenes, yeah, nobody yeah. even know how much stuff him responsible for. Yeah. You yeah. know, bread back, yeah. all these people, bad bull, all these people all over Jamaica, you know, um, friends for real, you know, mixing lab, all these places, you know. So, me know enough of the upcoming artists because them all link me, you know, Jaruti, you have all of your, you know, Ginger, you have all of, you know, these newer, um, you know, like when um, Chronix came out and Protege and who was the other guy, uh, Mortimer. Mortimer I go be one of them stars. Mortimer's fire. He I go be one of them stars, mm -hmm. and he already is. But when I say internationally, he I go get there because he have it got to get there. Yeah. So Jamaica have so much talent, brethren, mm -hmm. that is not even exposed or known. I had a drummy that played a stage show, sat up there and played drums for nine hours straight, backing everybody. And him a lick it, man, from day one to the end. Right. Enough talented musician there, Jamaica. You know how much Babylon a musician in Jamaica? A lot. I have constable sax a players, BSs, I have the police band. You have Gillespie, you have sax, you have everybody. So music run in Jamaica veins. And so when all these little youths now start coming up that are raised in music or production or Stone Love Kids or... Wayne loan some kids or, you know, you have all these little talented people who aren't even known about yet, but mm. them wicked. Right, right. Them no Fruit Loops and them can do Pro Tools and them put two and two together and run Real this easy. wire and do this. You know, see the brethren who made a, made a DJ thing from the banger phones and him I hook it up and him I play a tune. Yeah, the talent is without, is without question. So Jamex he got next. <laughs> Jamex he got next is what I you're got saying. next. So, 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 I remember I told you, it's two questions, next. right? So yeah. that's the first question, right? Yeah. So we said, who got next? I said, John Mexi got next. Right? <laughs> so, so here's the other question. Yeah. Of all the dope, the great, the talented artists that have come out and done <laughs> major, massive, dope, fire, necessary work. Okay. But have fallen off. Okay. Whether voluntarily or involuntarily, whether from bad decisions or not. Which one of them? I don't know you could be. Pick a barrage. Which one of them you like to say, Jano, just come back no star. Come back right about now. Come do what you're supposed to do. Just which one of them need to pick up back the mantle and come back? Lord Jaja. <laughs> Me can't just have one. Freddie McGregor. Um, natural Blacks. Natural Blacks. Because Freddie hasn't stopped. No, but... No. No, but Natural Blacks. Natural Blacks. Where's Natural Blacks been ever since him doing work back in the day? Nowhere. Well, I mean, I guess that was a uniform too because I realized uh, what he did according to, mm -hmm. you know, what he did and how he came out was was a foe. It was a fad. It was it, it was it was it was <laughs> it wasn't it real. It wasn't what it was, right? So so if you, if you want him come back, then you have to go send him back. Go create the fad, like the fad again. <laughs> him, him have to go. Him have to go to, go to teachings. But it, uh, yeah. he had some talent, you know, and. Um, Gosh, me can go, me can go back. You, you know, you know what I would really like to see mm -hmm. is like, um, but what I like to see all of the veterans just come back with like a new style. Like, Beerus need to come back. Barrington need to come back. Ken Booth, you know, all everybody you can think of. Um, Coco T. Me want Coco T to come back and shot some stuff. Me want. Basco X to come back. I want Jamison to come. None of these guys ever stop, but I want them to really come back and hit it. Right. Because these are good artists. You know, Fambo, you know, Merciless. You remember? You know, like all That's these not, that, people. That was my DJ. You know, right. like, yeah, like even Bounty, even Beanie, you know, um, you know, um, Hope and James, you know. I mean, my list goes on, you know. But, and but you I, only get one. Lord one. God. Uncle one can't fit in the Uber Lord with you. God. Uncle Only one can't get in the Uber. Right? What you, you say? You already, you, you already in the front because he said Jamex he got next. What you say? You mean that like you're saying an old veteran that needs to no, come no, back? No, I, 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 when I say old veteran, I mean anything over 10, 15 year old. Like like phone artists that had a solid career. 
making solid contributions from the Sizzler era. Mm -hmm. You can even go back further if you want to, but which one of them artists, the Bujus or whatever the case may be, you feel like, man, you dropped the ball and for reggae music, for dancehall, for the culture, for Jamaica, I'd really like for you to pick it back up right about now because I know you're capable of it. Come back on the battlefield. Give us vintage Cure or Kalanji or whomever the artist is you're going to choose. I need that vintage guy to come back right about now and start lead the flock again. You only got one seat left in your Uber because groceries are on the seat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So who's that one artist? Lord, yeah, put me on the spot for real. Um, give me a minute. Might have to really. That's a good, you know, say nobody give me a good question where I'm quiet, you know. And this one, a good question. Um, let me see. Think about it. Think about it. Because. I win. I win? I win. Yo. Yo. I'm, I'm amazed you said I win right now because I, rem I remember we all thought, I personally thought I win was, was going to be that, was going to be that guy. I'm mean, not telling the light. If we could get you're right. If we could get vintage, some, if we could get I win back to prominence, right about now, contributing the type of music that he was doing. Wow, Jamex, you lit me with that one. The I win for real, and I definitely think that's a well warranted. Jano. Let me tell you Jano. why. I, let me tell you why I say I win. Mm, mm. My career started booking shows with I win back in the day. Uh, one of my first show that Jamex production set up was when I win was on tour. And I did Book I Win, and that was back when it was Book of Love, and he was hot and fire and lava <laughs> and all these things, you know? Yeah. And he was dip on tour, and he was fire all over the place. And, him, and you know, that man can perform like no other. When him come live, he sound just like him in the studio. Yeah. Him cut dubs, he sound just like him I sing at a, a 45. Um that man is a one unique man, both in a Jaja world, spiritual world, and a reggae world, you know, and mm -hmm. him operate under him own principles like me, and him operate under Selassie I principles and under spiritual principles. So, like earlier when we mentioned him, you know, if the man not ready to touch the stage, I'm not going to touch the stage. Right. You know, so... Him, him, him are going to one different place. And, you know, say during COVID, a lot of these artists kind of had time to reflect and go in the studio. And you're going to be amazed how much new music is going to come out this year and next year. Because while everybody was locked up in COVID, they were recording music. Right. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. Um, so you're going to be surprised. You're going to hear a lot of the old names I mentioned come out and drop new albums. Mm -hmm. Even the women, you know, Tanya work on something. Everybody I work on something. Um, so I win now. I win just started going out touring again. Right. And him, I go, him have music for days, you know. Him come like Tupac when it come to this. Him have music that just sit down and put down that him never put out. So... When I win, really get his mind right and him ready to come back and really ready to take it by storm and focus, mm -hmm. I win is who I would really, really love with all of my heart to see, to come back on the scene and do what he used to do and fire up the crowd and send the message that him send and burn love upon, on, on, on who him need to burn love upon. Cool, no man. So I win. I win, ladies and gentlemen. Big bad, 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 bad. Not nice records. Top choice records, you know. Hey, Wayne. Hey, what's on a pork more? Lava. <laughs> Some boy, you glorify badness as if badness is something good. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, we have our time, but trust me, it's a vibe. Lover. Erica. Badness, some boy, you pre. I can't afford tea, much less law, you feel. Some said them no. <laughs> I win. Jamexi. I want yes. to say, I want to say, first of all, big respect and thanks for pass through the program. All right. Yeah, man. Um, sorry for the internet snafus, but we got, we, I'm recording it, so we we will get to put up the recording, right? Yeah, we put up the recording and playback. Yeah. And I just want to touch lastly on the legal mm -hmm. piece. Yep. Um. So anybody who want to fix their credit, get their credit together, um, form their business, register themselves as a writer, register themselves as a label. Um, any of the veteran artists or anybody who have contracts that they want me to look at, um, if they just want to know the process, what systems are available, um, if they want somebody to be sued for copyright or infringement or 
anything that they have legal, this is what I do too. Um, I'm not a certified attorney, meaning I didn't renew my license, but me is an attorney for Jaja. Right, and right, me know right. my thing. Right. And me know me can do bigger and better things than any other attorneys out there on our earth. Right. I'm in Okias law. I'm a study everything. I'm a know it. So that makes me different. So not only am I a singer, I'm a writer, I'm a producer, I'm a musician. I can break beat, beats down in my head to where I can hear just the ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch right, or right, the, right. the boom, 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 whatever I want to do. I can hear underlaying compositions within other compositions. I think we mentioned earlier, I know so much lyrics, I feel like I'm an encyclopedia. <laughs> so when it comes to music of all genres, me no music. And now you put on the publishing piece, the distribution piece, um, the, the registrations, making sure everybody linked behind the scenes, the YouTube, the copyright, the content ID. I know how to put it all together. Right. Um, so if anybody have any questions, all of my social media is just at Jamexi. Any platform in our earth, at Jamexi. Even my website, Jamexi.com. That's my name, my brand, my trademark. I own it. I live it. I breathe it. My empire is Jamexi's Heart of Love Empire. And it's J-A-H-M-E-X-I for those. That is right. Ja is within me. X marks the spot in I. Ja makes it. I'm here to do Ja Ja works. I'm here to do truth, righteousness, spread light, spread love, expose the people who need to expose, make the truth come out. Now, Ja Ja, take back the food from the people's pockets who it never should have been there in the first place and restore order to the music business. So uh, that I'm here to do. Mad. So you can link me. <laughs> me not say me go take you on as a client because you know say me busy, but say you come to me and me know you and you're my brethren and you need help and you have money, holla at me. But you have to have money star because you know say Jamaica say I run upon money because I can't do my thing can't do and I can't help all the uno if I can't help myself. With that being said. <laughs> if you guys want to support the movement, Cash App at Jamexi. Mad. PayPal at Jamexi Media. Anything Mad. at Jamexi. Send me something now. <laughs> if you want free advice, send me something now because I'm going to give you a million dollars worth of advice for free 99. Zian, so you have to support me because I true. Me feed the hungry. Me help people. Every day on earth, even though I'm a driver, one big bad beamer, I still stop and say hello. If someone come up to my window... Even if I have a quarter, I give it. And even if I had the last shirt on my back, me would I give it because I've been there. Mm. And I'll say this right now. The only reason I decided to step up and put my life in danger to fight for this industry, hear that again. I stepped up to put my life in danger to mm-hmm. fight for this industry to restore order and truth. Because these people have deep pockets. They don't take nothing to say here. Here's a hundred grand. Go kill off Jamexi or go poison her. Mm. It now go work, star, because I'm covered by an energy. Man. And Jaja got me to do what I do. And when I realized I didn't have to give in to that fear, I'm going to run into the fire ready to sacrifice myself for all of Uno. And that's where the difference is. I'm ready to die any time because I know what my purpose is. I know who I am and I know what I was sent here to do. And I will go out in the blazing fire, Ooh, fighting man. for truth and righteousness in a music mm. because I want it to be restored to what it was originally. And I want the records of reggae legends to be fixed. And I want their empires, I want their families, I want their kids to be able to eat and, and have a living off of what their daddy or mommy created. And I want the people who contributed to all these legendary compositions to have their credit where credit's due. And I want the people who are thieves and liars and stealers and the big bud companies who write these contracts to take advantage of the artists, I want them to be exposed. Mm -hmm. And I want them to go down because they should have never did that in the first place and they know it. So they can get mad at me, cuss me, say something bad about me all they want. Everybody know I'm doing the truth. Everybody know I'm doing righteousness to the best of my ability. I'm not righteous because none of us are, but I operate from my heart and I do things on good faith, good works, and I keep it legal by the books. Ask me how many of my clients right now cost me because they have to do this and that. Jamexi, 
Can I just no? <laughs> no, if me not have my paperwork to start, you not go register nothing, and me not go drop nothing on distro kid, and you not get no iTunes link, brethren. I love so, it. I love it. you have to follow order to restore order, and you gotta take back from the people's pockets who have the money that it should have never been there to bombo clot. And I have to say that because I'm righteous and I have a passion about that. Mm. And I love my job because every day I go through the records, me I find more and more and more. And it come like your investigator and the whole can of worms are pop, 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 pop. Trust me, and people you wouldn't even think of a thief, brethren. It's the industry. It's been going on for the longest and we got to fix that, it. May I say watch out because me I come for you. Jamexy. <laughs> Flexy, sexy, dexy, rexy. Jamexy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's our time to get up out of here. I want to thank you all so much for rocking with us. It is indeed Jamexi. we got people listening in on Radio Right on Raw Zion Hans Radio, um, Real Vibes Live, those people listening in on um, Homegrown with, Jame- with G-Code.com. And, and Jamexi. And Jamexi, folks. <laughs> all, all the people upon Jamexi. IG, listen, man. Again, in a minute or two, we're going to be off so you can go back on YouTube and watch over the whole thing. I mean, skip past the first couple of minutes when it's about fun, whatever the case may be, because the internet, but trust me, when I say the thing fire, <laughs> thing fire. It's a vibe. Jamexi. Yeah, thanks man. Thanks again. Yeah, man, big up. Appreciate it. At Jamexi, all social media. Hit her up. Me chichinita, some musica. Homegrown with G. Cole. <laughs> Estás escuchando Homegrown nice. con G. Cole. Nin xin zai zheng zai shou ting de shi Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole.